So then, why don't we go ahead and get this thing started? First off, yo, welcome everybody. Uh, I really appreciate all you guys being here. Today, we're doing something very special, and we're doing a community tier list with the best theory crafters that I know in the entire community. And the reason why I'm doing that is because a lot of times, theory crafters, uh, you know, they say that you're an idiot, I'm the smartest one. So now when that happens, we can do it to each other's face. And it's yeah. going to be sick. Speaking Fucking of which, uh, I do want to start off with uh, Gotcha Smack for introductions here real quick. I've been told you're getting a lot of for Crit mm -hmm. Kafka. Is yeah, that true or definitely. no? Definitely. That's absolutely true, and it's dumb shit ever because at the end of the day, it's always boiled down to like a two or three percent marginal difference. Right. Which is <laughs> funny because when you go to the try hard uh, levels of mid maxing, the crit build appears to come out on top against three enemies or lower. And um, it's it's always a ridiculous like battle. It's funny. I've come to realize that I am the ultimate enemy against theory crafters. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, yeah. man, I'm what you are yeah. to get shit, but to theory crafters, bro. Hey, I it's believe ridiculous. it, man. It's it's dude. Sometimes they just pick someone who they hate, and you will. And I'll just be real, man. And you're right. It doesn't matter what you do. You're gonna be getting that for the rest of your life. I know it's hilarious. I mean, I love it. I'm thick skinned man. It is what it is. But um, yeah. at the end of the day, I know how to articulate myself. I know how to battle any argument they throw at me. Yeah. But I mean, they took one line I said and just ran with it, bro. What was and the line? Was just like, what was the line? The line you you reacted to one of the videos. It was literally me saying that uh, if you're not breaking shields with uh, uh, what is it, Kafka, then best in slots going to be crit build. That's literally one line that I said, and they just way went ballistics over that shit. Oh, what no. what is their argument against it though? Like, is it like no, you should be using break effect, or or what they, is what is their argument? The argue well, one of the, actually there's two different arguments. One is crit sucks. That was one argument. Like, just crit, don't even do it on Kafka at all because it sucks. That was the first argument. The other right. argument was it's not best in slot. And um, I was literally, the way I worded it was if you aren't breaking shields, in other words, if you aren't doing the attack percent speed build, uh -huh. and the best in slot's going to be crit. So I, I literally strung it along as a means to say they're pretty much in the same ballpark of damage, but people just ran with it. Uh, so it's a real Ganyu as a support uh, type scenario. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's like it's not even that big of a deal at the end of the day. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Well, we'll find out who gives a. Fuck. I want I want to talk about that later in the podcast, but I want to get introduction another way. Next up, we have Little Bear, aka Guova, certified as a potato. Very excited to have you here, brother. It's lovely to be here. Uh, I wish there was a a bear filter, but I, I only found a potato. Bro. So now, uh. Hey, we're matching at least, right? Oh, bro. Okay. <laughs> that shit looks creepy as fuck. I'm not even again. That shit is crazy. Uh, out of curiosity, but how long have you been doing this for? Uh, like content creating for uh, like YouTube and shit. Content creating? Yeah. This is my first gig. I started like four months ago, I think. Okay. And uh, I, I kind of speed ran through. I think that's the right way of saying it. Uh, being a content creator, you know, I, I got my uh, power spike and then I instantly started drama with uh, <laughs> Gatcha Smack over here. So I might hey, it's retire all love, in a brother. week. It's all love over here, man. You know what I do to avoid all that? I just go, yeah, character looks good. I just, I don't know what the <laughs> math is and I'm not going to do it. So, but yeah, it looks good. And then yeah. they, they can't, uh, they can't judge me. They can't, they can't nitpick it. Do I bring yeah, any value not. to the community? No, I don't. But um, <laughs> I, I have an opinion at least. Go. Go. Uh, uh, shit. Well, next up, I like that. We have uh, you know a very special guest. We have Michael Tash, one of my favorite content creators of all time. If he makes a video, I'm reacting to it. Uh, you all have probably seen me react to a thousand of M. Tash's videos. They're my favorite. And uh, the creator of the greatest trilogy of I Quit videos for Genshin Impact. It was a legendary time. Michael Tash, welcome to the stream. Thanks for having me. Yeah. No, By the way, I, I'm quitting Genshin. <laughs> yes! yes! Anyways. Yeah, we, we, got, we got to talk about Fontaine later. We got to talk about Fontaine later. Uh, just for a little bit. Uh, next up, we have a guy who I swear to God would have hated me. Uh, because <laughs> I have... So, 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 Mr. Buck, let me give you context. Let me tell you why I thought you were going to hate me. I have been shit on by CN players for so long. And I thought you were like their spokesman, like the CN bro guy. And I was like, oh, God. Oh, God. Because I play this game called Arknights. And oh, my God, the CN community 
pay to me. So I thought uh, you might take their their voice and throw it at me. But uh, I am very glad to find out that you don't despise me. So welcome to the podcast. Your videos are absolutely amazing. Yo, yo thanks, Texton. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm also really, really new to this scene because uh, very similar to Goba, um, Honkai Star is the first game I, I got involved in. So I had no idea that you were like involved in any of the Night drama or Genshin drama, all that kind of stuff. So uh, when I saw all the comments reacting yeah. to um hey folky be careful of tecton <laughs> like yeah. there's so many comments on like oh my god be careful of this guy he's like he's like the he's like the devil or something i, I was yeah Jane, i didn't really know what's going on so okay. yeah good to be here good to be here guys well i mean kudos to you for uh not just being like oh yeah this guy on the internet said that you know i had a comment the other day i'm not sure if you saw this on twitter uh, it was a comment with about 5,000 hearts that said the worst person list, number one tech tone, number two. Uh, it was awful. Don't worry, that. tech. I'm working my way up that list, buddy. <laughs> 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 give me, give me a couple fun. more Don't weeks, bro. Yeah. yeah it, it'd be nice to have someone else down here with me. But uh, yeah, Mitch Bogey, very, very glad to have you here, man. You have awesome, awesome, awesome work. Yo. All right, next up we got Vulcan Games. Once again, y'all know that Vulcan and I have a lot of history. Uh, we've been covering the same games for almost four years now. Uh, super good dude, beautiful accent. Uh, probably, when, when a new gacha game comes out, I would probably say, uh, yeah, you have some of the best coverage for it because you come out with, like, what, nine videos, like the day yeah. it comes out and then 30 yeah. videos the next day it comes yeah. out. It's, it's the way it goes. That's my, fa yeah. that's my favorite part. Like I said last time, I, I, I play everything. I'm still like grinding this Tower of God Idol game in the background while we're talking. I just, yeah, every new game is fun. Jesus Christ, bro. Tower of God? Is it good? If, bro, if you like Idol, like, a lot of people don't like Idol games, especially from this crowd, like from Star Rail type thing, but it's a, the, honestly, Netmarble did all right. Nah, nah, there's no way. I hate Netmarble so much, bro. I can't think of a single good mobile game that Netmarble's put out. I actually can't even think of one. You had fun in Seven Deadly Sins till you raged because you couldn't get the right cards to match. <laughs> I'm pretty saying, like, you didn't have a big cry in that game when you left it. You're like, no, I can never get it. It's the RNG, man. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like me. You thought you know, that game was good. I thought that game was ass, bro. That shit was terrible. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed okay. it. Uh, and uh, lastly, we have Gotcha Gamer, which I'm hoping he knows his mic is muted. And we'll oh, yeah, I know it's muted, oh. but my cats are <laughs> each other. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Really? Oh, damn. I'm sorry to hear that, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, this is Gotcha Gamer. Uh, probably, and this is uh, this is something I actually copy your thumbnails uh, because they're really good. Uh, some of the best thumbnails on YouTube. Really amazing coverage <laughs> of uh, Gotcha Games, and just a good dude. So, Gotcha Gamer, welcome, brother. Thanks a lot. Sick today. We're doing something really fun. Okay, we got every theory crafter uh, that would respond to my DMs to come in here. We're going to make a community tier list together. And uh, I also want to talk about uh, any builds that you think that are not meta, that could be meta, that could be considered. Like, for example, Crit Kafka or my favorite, Full Damage March 7th, which I want to talk about later because I think that one has potential <laughs> for sure. Uh, but we're pretty much going to go down the list. It's going to be a very, very, very simple. should be a pretty short stream. And we're just going to talk about our characters, uh, who has the most experience. Because there's a lot of characters that uh, a lot of people don't have, myself included. Like, for example, uh, I try really hard to give an opinion on Arlon, but I don't have him. So I I'm trying to get information from other stores because I haven't built him yet. I've been told he's better than people say, but I, I just don't see it. So maybe y'all can bring an opinion. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have... Uh, Three judges, just letting y'all know, they don't know this yet. Uh, M. Tash, Gotcha Smack, and Guoba Certified are going to be the three judges. They're all going to give their rating, and then we're going to have to come to an average between the three, and that's how we're going to rank uh, each character. Should be pretty easy. Also, I just want to talk about this out of the, out of the, out of the gates. Have y'all seen the Jing Yuan drama? Nope. Oh, like the, that he's getting power prepped already by everyone? Uh, people are furious. Because uh, apparently every patch, their general moves further and further down the DPS rankings, and they don't know why that character is so shit. Well, because Serval's better than him, right, guys? I agree, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can, can I just ask M Tash? Because uh, that that one, the uh, who's your? Who, I forget his name all the time. Tech Tone. Who's your favorite guy to react to? The 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 slapstick it, it, type. 
he baits everyone. I mean, I just didn't do the math. Like, he's just like, he's like, yeah, like the yeah. servals like so yeah. close. I was like, yeah, sure. What, what's, I mean, what's the dude's oh, name? Are, are you talking about talking about Yango? Yango, yes. Yeah. The damn yeah. oh, he to trolled him. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, didn't, yeah. I didn't do the math. I was like, fuck yeah. it. If this guy's saying that she's good, I was like, I've, I've got <laughs> idolons. I'm going for it. I don't give a shit. So uh, for, anybody who doesn't, base, let's face it. for anybody who doesn't know the context, there's this content critic of Yango who makes a shit post every single time a new character is released and just says they're absolute dog shit or they're incredibly broken. And uh, M Dash didn't get the satire of one one and made a well, react. To it. I mean, it was so funny. It, is it satire? Like I, I can't, I can't tell. Like, oh, it everything too egregious. Everything that guy says is either a joke or an edgy joke. He's never really? said a serious comment in his life. He's 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 a sociopath, 100. percent But sometimes it'd be <laughs> like that. But now we're gonna get started into this, and I do want to start. Uh, how how many of you guys uh, have already built a Arlon? I played him in the beginning, and then I was I in beta when I got Gene. Okay. Uh, do we think he's good or no? Because I'm under the impression that he's complete dog shit. D does anybody disagree with that? So like with I, I, uh, go ahead with Eidolons, and if you're able to shield him, you can do like a low HP. Um, combo, but it's like, do you have Gepard? Do you have uh, do you have uh, Eidolons to make it work? Because because the more Eidolons he gets, and the better you can shield him, the more you could try to abuse it. But like, I just don't know if it's worth the playstyle. I think it'd be I think it'd be fun. Like when I saw him slamming and jamming in the one event, it's like yeah. I've never even seen these animations. I see some potential, yeah. but I just I don't know if it's worth it. Sick okay. character, to be honest, like super sick character. And I agree with Mtash. He's you need certain parts to make him viable. But I'm one of them people. I do not comment on a character unless I've taken them to the uh, end game, tested them out, or I've calculated them. I haven't done none of that shit on him, so I can't call him trash or good. Okay, yo, Pokey Guo, would y'all have any opinions on uh, Arlon at all or now? Um, personally, I've also never played him before. He's literally level one. So, <laughs> but <laughs> just from his skill, in my opinion. He's he's kind of like a, in a very contradicting um situation where he wants to be in low health, but he has no like self-sustaining capabilities like Blade, right? So the moment he like stays at red health, like a sneeze could kill him and, and it's gone, right? Yep. So can you really play this character in like this kind of stage where like a, a single like AOE and, and he's done? Uh, I, I don't really think he, he suits the current environment. Maybe in the future, if we get like some sort of... um passive shields or like heals that constantly keeps him at this rate health and he can sustain that then probably can work but for now i don't think so yeah guaba you got anything to say um i think he's an sss plus tier unit okay um, because How you can get three standard passes from leveling him up <laughs> that is huge man that is huge. <laughs> no, uh, i think he's he's not complete dog shit uh but he kind of is because he, he's like he needs Japard like uh, Yanqing kind of wants Japard, but then he just does like no damage compared to Yanqing. Um, yeah. I think what Poke said, po Pokey Pokemon said was uh, was good. If we get like a like a damage nullifier, I think that's his best. But he needs like ramp up. He needs like a Japard, uh, and at that point, you might as well like run Himiko. So a damage nullifier. Do y'all look? Yeah, at, because... do y'all look at leaks at all or no? <laughs> mm, i have dreams okay i have dreams too i think that that might i think that might be happening is what i've been what i've been dreaming about oh. me personally so i don't know if y'all have looked into that or not but uh man, that's just me though that's just me that's just a fleeting yo gotcha game you got any opinion on uh, arlana now i think he's just not beginner friendly at all like literally at the start he has like <laughs> some of the worst survivability and then at the end, uh, I'm noticing like uh, at the final stage of Memory of Chaos, because that's the only place where you test like the character's capability. It's just, he's good, like if you're able to clear it, but I'm, I'm not going to lie, he's also like level 50 for on my account. He was super good at like uh, at closed beta test, but like who cares about it? Like, it's been like two months or three, so it's been over. But yeah, I think uh, apparently this he was point, broken, like, then he got giga nerfed is what I heard. Yeah, he he was super good, but at this point, I don't know. Like the the content is just not that challenging. So you can bring Arlen if you want, if you like him. Uh, I mean, I mean, any team like works at this point because at one point we were like struggling with resources, but I'm pretty sure people have like at least two teams built by now. They yeah. can clear the, the the memory of chaos, whatever. So play him if you want. He's not the best, but like he's not the worst. 
but he's kind of he's... interesting because since he doesn't consume like skill points, so he can build around that. And I kind of really like characters who doesn't consume skill points because after like playing with Kafka and DOT teams, it takes so many skill points to like player with, with like a Sambo and uh, Luca. I, I don't know, man. I am I am of the opinion of I think he is genuinely the worst character in the entire game. I, I do yeah. think that you can make I think you can beat the game with any character you like if you build them up. But I, I if he's not the worst, I don't know who the worst character is. I, I, I don't think he's as worse as like Shinyan at least. I don't think that's that's the key. Shinyan, yeah, I, 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 uh, oh Genshin, the the black girl with the guitar from Genshin. Yeah. Oh, well, and Honkai, yeah. and Honkai. I, I think he is definitively the worst character in the game, is what I would say. That It's either that or Herda, right? Like, surely so, it's her or Herda. I, 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 I'm out of curiosity, though. Yeah. What do y'all define as a worst character? I guess this is where I always defer from people, yeah. because if, you're, if worse is because they need a lot of variables to make the kit work, Hmm. but they do but they perform well when they get those variables i don't consider that a bad character i only consider it a bad character if you if they get all those variables and they still suck balls okay well, yeah i mean you, I, we, we, i guess you i'm just curious to i'm asking yeah like, I, I'm I can open define to this so discussion. Yeah. my definition is the person mm -hmm. who needs the most resources the person who needs the most to make work and will still get outperformed by another character okay got you like yeah. for example Countable. yeah go ahead go ahead michael okay okay so like uh my question is, yeah. is the Herda bias because the start of the game in the first patch, or is the Herda bias now? Because now there are way more ice units in the game. Like, there's the big monkey, I think he has, like, ice weakness. Like, is there more enemies that you can effectively use Herda now, and then she's going to pop off than before? Because, um, like, before, she was on. essentially useless in everything. But, you know, maybe she's got more value now. Yeah, I think she's really good as, like, a breaker, but her damage is, uh, like, non-existent. But maybe that's, like, fine. Maybe she does so many follow-up attacks, it's, like, fine, like, how little her numbers do. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, she can definitely break some damn ice shields, 100%. But I just I just find her numbers, like, super low. But I have she, heard, she heard of Himiko useful. is very fun. She had a useful period during that second round of Memory of Chaos where we had the... Uh, the dude that summoned all the ice units, you had the tree and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, she, she had a play. Like, I built her just for fun. And honestly, her is like one of the funnest characters I played with. Like, not, not, oh, yeah. not she's not the best, but she is so fun. <laughs> like, I, like I, her and QQ, I just genuinely enjoy playing the game when I'm using them. Like, yeah. it's just fun. I do want to move this tier list along. I'm going to put Arlon in D tier. Are we all fine with that? Yep. Yeah, right. that's fine. Okay, cool. Yep. Cool, cool, yep. cool, 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 cool. Damage yep, yep, wise, yep. yeah. All right, cool. All right, I next up. I disagree, bro. Okay, what do you disagree with? Okay, I was right. They run it back. All right, next up, <laughs> no, let's talk. Let's talk about Asta. Any thoughts? Anybody dying to talk about Asta? And the fact that she is completely free and that performs as good as she does, I think she belongs in the, the highest tier. <laughs> okay. Uh, I um, think, yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, up, Tash. I really like her shield breaking and like. For speed buff and attack buff, if you get, I think it's C2, she starts to to bring quite a bit of value in your team and uh, and essentially just like spam like 30 or 40 percent extra attack percentage for everyone. And so like if you pair her with like Yang Ching or something like that, like there, there there's some good damage potential if you need the uh, the shield breaking for sure. So yeah. I, I like her. I mm. just haven't used her a lot recently because I'm kind of in the camp of like buff up Sealy with Ting Yun and just one shot everything or uh, I, I don't know I feel like some people uh can abuse other support units more than her um so I, I think she's fantastic free to play like if you yeah. if you're free to play and you use her as a support and she's a breaker like it is so huge like when I was doing the four star only like she was massive but I still look at it as like you got like Bronya you got the Bronya tier of Bronya and Silverwolf then I feel like splashably I would call uh Ting Yun next for, for most players that have a good carry that they can buff up with Ting Yun and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then I put Asta and Pella in that tier below them because Asta and Pella feel more situational, whereas Ting Yun's that's splashable. Fair. That's fair. Mm -hmm. So, so okay. that's the way I always look at it. It's like I always go like Bronya tier, Ting Yun, and then Asta Pella. Yeah. Okay. That's my feel. I, I, Just because I think Pella's situation... very splashable though. What's you that? Think? I, I think Pella's pretty splashable. The uh, well, the attack I, I is find... yeah go yeah I I think the just the attack alone is good but the speed is insane uh, a lot of people undervalued speed at the start giving like fifty speed you can like 
I mean, I don't know if any of you have done like the 200 speed Kafka yet, but you get like an the extra action every cycle. Speed, God, how the it's... fuck would I get that? <laughs> with Asta, <laughs> I imagine he's doing it with Asta. Maybe Just one fifty yeah, and then with, another fifty. Holy shit! No, I, I, I think that Payload could be special because the defense break is so good with that character for sure. No, no, he was saying. I think yeah. he was. We, we, I think you said Pella, and then you were talking about Asta. Yeah, Pella's splashable. I think. Thing is, Asta's like super versatile. You can go, you can go the crit build that a lot of people go. You can go break, or you can go full tank, and she still brings value with the speed. Uh, and into five weeks, she's pretty broken. There's, a, there's a crit build for Asta. I've never heard of that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah some no, unhinged people go crit Asta. Is it good or is it kind of like Mimi? It's Mimi, uh, I, I think, would say. Yeah, it's Mimi, but uh, but she Mimi. does damage and then she also brings speed and attack. I think it's a pretty good unit to have. Okay, I mean, yeah, I I've been saying that I don't really think there's any turn based RPG with an AOE defense break where that character hasn't been fucking incredible. I kind of like uh, Galio from or Galleon from a uh, Summoner's War. Uh, and there's tons of units from Epic 7. Anything with an AoE defense break is so fucking good. I'm not sure how much Payla's defense break is at max. Uh, let me actually check. Because at my... 40%? Pay it's 40% defense break at max? Yeah, somewhere around there. That is fucking ridiculous. The yeah. problem is, though, is getting the ult up and keeping the uptime on it at all times. That's the, another thing. Because generally when you put Payla on a team, she can't really use her skill as much as you would like her to because she's on a team where other people are utilizing that skill. So you have to like auto attack with her, That's which fair. can get in the way of keeping her uptime up on her uh, defensive strat. That's yeah. where she loses value for me personally, but she's still amazing. Okay, let's 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 circle back to Asta here real quick. Uh, I think Asta is minimum A tier. I'm wondering if we're all okay with that. The, the current tiers are S, A, B, C, D. I don't want to do any of the triple S bullshit, just A, B, C. I mean, we maybe if we need to, but it's up to you. I, I think Asta and A tier yeah. to be fair. A tier solid. Yep. Sorry, can I just clarify this, yep. this yeah. tier list is, is for MOC performance or or what was this? Uh, no, pretty much just it. how good they are as a unit with like is the lowest investment you can get with the most output that you can get for investing like a lowest normal amount. investment for the most output you can get. Okay, yeah, yeah. cool, 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 cool. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, if, if that is the definition, I think in my opinion, I think Asta is, should be an S tier because she That's genuinely does not need like <laughs> any investments. Like you, you literally just need to level her ultimate and talent, uh, give her some speed boots and and some HP so that she doesn't die from a single hit, and she's good to go. So like in terms of investment, she's like one of the lowest, and she's basically free, right? So in my opinion, in in terms of like lowest investment for the best bang for buck, um, she she's S in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with that on that criteria. It's a free 99, 70 percent attack boost with 50 speed, and if she's a harmony path character, she can rock dance, dance, dance. Rodney's light call like she's cracked for and she's free she don't cause a single pity <laughs> okay I mean yo Guava how do you feel about that uh, I feel offended at this misinformation personally okay <laughs> alright cool no As... I'm kidding at yo. E0 it's just at E0 she uh, has hard up time with her uh, talent unless you're spamming skill and she doesn't really want to spam skill Yeah, but at E0, yes, yeah, she's incredible. I would say S for now, but if we look into Bronya Ting and after, she might drop a tier. Okay, yo, gotcha, Gamer. I don't know. I think she's A tier. All right. Like, I, I haven't used her that much, but to me, like, still, you're normally using, like, the main supports. The game is dominated by Ting Yun and Bronya. Obviously, people might not have Bronya, then sh sure, she's S tier if you don't have Bronya. Hmm. If you're building two teams, I haven't used her in any of my teams, especially if the like the boss or the elite enemy doesn't have a fire weakness. So her like shield breaking goes out the window. But sure, she's fine, like in my opinion. But I don't know. I just prefer like really dumb, dumb down characters like Tingyun or Brani, who just buff the damage, and <laughs> I don't have to think about speed. Yeah, I, mean, I, th I think looking at it in terms of value for investment isn't probably the right criteria because then a god tier, like I'm trying to think of a god tier character, like like uh, who's harder to build but like is god tier and it's like, okay, they need a bit more investment but they're still way better once you build them. Yeah, like yeah, QQ, it's tier, tier once you well. build her. Like I think it's, that's it's, why it's me easy. and Pokey said she belongs in S2 because Tekton made the argument that this was off of low investment. And yeah, I, I feel like, Asta is you know, low investment. Uh, <laughs> characters where it's like E0, anybody can build them and not feel bad about it. Like they'll be useful mm -hmm. in like a lot of scenarios. It's probably the best thing to do because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who does the most damage because it's not really hard to clear everything regardless. So I think like the only thing that's important to do is Figure out what free-to-play players can build. They won't regret, and it'll help them clear the content well enough. Yeah, they might yeah not clear definitely. The content, 
take yeah. the low I'm investment the variable out the equation. I'm I'm fine with her being in A tier. I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I think A tier is probably fair because I do think other people in her role, which is important to note, like note can do her job a little bit better than she does as a yeah. support. Yeah. All right, cool. Fair. That's fair. All right. Next, let's do Bailu. Uh I think Bailu's fucking awful. Personally. And I would love to be told why I'm wrong. Because I feel like <laughs> Natasha is just better. Because she cannot remove the debuffs. That's the That's worst the part about her. Problem. Yep. That's and the biggest and problem. she's a casino healer. It's like, wh why the fuck are you healing yeah. my tank two of the three times yeah. uh, in a panic and situation? Like Power crept by Lord's a nasty. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, Luocha You, you don't Natasha. think she's worse than Natasha, do you? I do oh, think she's not. worse than Natasha. No, no, no. I, I think, think the no, cleanse no, no. is a not big L. That's my, that's my only problem. Because, like, somebody like fucking Kafka Boss can just, like, you know, uh, sedu seduce one of your teammates. And if you got her on your team, well, they're just seduced. <laughs> it sucks, man. Yeah. Why, Vulcan, do you disagree? Yeah, like, like I've got Bailu on both my accounts. Yeah. And it's like, I can just Bailu as my solo defensive option. I can't do that with Natasha. I do that. I do that. I do that. I do solo Natasha all the time. No, no you can like yeah. so we, like hype with hype carry Zealer or something like that. Yeah, I'm just saying like I've got low investment. Like one of my accounts is only um, Trailblazer level sixty. Yeah, and it's like she because of the way the the passive works where you get the healing when you get hit and all that stuff. If you don't need a cleanse which you don't need to cleanse in every fight. The revive is super handy. True. Also, also I'm big on autoing. So like, I, I just like being able to put it on and just let it go and like, just cruise through MOC. So like, but like, I just think her, her healing output is good. The passive is really good for the extra heals when they get attacked. Mm. Her ult heals big and her, um, her res is just handy. If the cleanse is not considered, she's better than Natasha, a hundred percent. Her heals are fucking cracked. But with cleanse in the equation, it's it's a nail. Yeah, I I just feel like a healer not having a cleanse is like borderline makes them unusable. Like I, I you need one so fucking bad. And like I'll be real, like when one point three comes out and we get links, I really don't think anybody's gonna be building a bylaw over building the links. Because Lynx looks insane. I'm not sure if y'all have seen that. I'm not sure if y'all have had that dream yet, but Lynx looks incredible for a free Yeah, you, you got to remember how many times things get nerfed from the, the first time you get leaks. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm under the impression, and once again, I'm not saying my opinion is the right one. I'm just saying in my opinion. I, I, I would never want to bring a character because they have a res, because if I'm playing around having a res, I feel like that's just weird. Any, any disagreeers? I mean, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't. The I don't fact like that having... it's a, I, well, I would say the fact that it's a turn-based res is obviously way better than it is in Genshin. But at the end of the day, you don't really need to res as well. So I, yeah, I don't know. It's it's one of those weird situations where she's only valuable if you need a healer. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you what do you think, Pokey, about Bilo? Um, I I don't think she's like. That much worse. I mean, considering the fact that we really only have Lord Chao, which is like the top, top, top of all the healers, right? I think between yeah. Bailu and Natasha, I really don't think that Bailu is that much worse. Just because, especially since if you want to consider that this tier list is, is like for the free to play or for the newcomers, the lowest investment. Like, like basically what Vulcan said, right? I think Bailu on full auto, she pretty much makes sure that your team will never die because she she does have the revive. And sometimes having that revive can be even more helpful than a cleanse because you straight up just revive that character. And I've played on like um accounts with Bailu and I swear to god I thought oh my god okay forget it this run is over this run is over and my one of my team just passed away and I just remember oh wait Bailu has revived which is like a huge to me right and I don't think a cleanse would have been able to do that so to say that Bailu is like so much worse than Natasha um I wouldn't I say so much worse, much worse yeah. I was just saying I feel like she should be better for the five sort of four star difference like I, I just I can't get over not having a cleanse but I'm not I also feel so like her healing but... throughput is way higher than Natasha. Am I wrong on that? No, you are right. You're right. Milo no, heals way more, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I also I feel that. like uh, it's like, don't get it twisted. If you have Natasha and Bailu, build both of them, and then exactly. you, just, you win. Nah, build, like, build, like, build like, one you... and wait for links. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. like if you, yeah, exactly. If there's like a better healer down the road, cool. But um like I've I've had Bailu since the start and Natasha. I use both of them. I just look at which one needs the cleanse and which one doesn't. And like for the most part, it functions in all memory of chaos that's so far. That's fair. That's something so, that, that's something that I didn't think about. It's just bring her in the fights that don't need the cleanse. That's very yeah 100%. yeah. You're just transitioning it around, and yeah. there's always something you might have to deal with. But 
Yeah, um, it, it's just yeah. my problem. I'm very anti Bailu. I I don't know. I feel like she should be better. I find the RNG aspect of her kid is just super fucking annoying. Uh, and I don't know. I, I feel like playing around. Oh, and then I'll res right here is just super dorky. Uh, I'd rather just not fucking die. But that's just my opinion. But I, I am probably. Like only puts things in S tier if they have big tits, and that's all it is. Like, <laughs> it's just. Like, it, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. One thing I want to add about Violet's <laughs> like resing ability is that when she's like crowd control, you cannot even use it. So that's one of the things oh, I've noticed. Oh yeah, when I'm that's doing, a like, big L. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've God, noticed like when that. I was doing like the tenth uh, MOC stage, mm. literally she just gets uh, crowd control, and then anybody else dies, and she doesn't res them. So it's immediately like one star lost. He's that, right. It's kind of like saying Natasha can't cleanse when she's controlled. Yeah, but still, it's it kind of sucks because it's her biggest Oops. selling point to me, at least, that they're auto resing. Anything else yeah. about her is like in, in a couple of months, she's not gonna be any like she's not gonna be interesting at all, because th that's the only thing that's like interesting about her that the auto res she offers. Here, I want to go like, around because because I, I want to know because I feel like this is gonna be we can talk about this for hours probably. And gotcha, yeah. I think you're making really good points. Uh, what tier would we say we think Bailu is? And I would like to start now, from hey. Loba and then just go down the list. Well, what do you think? Uh, gonna be an A from me. Okay, Smack. B. Uh, attached. If you don't have Lucha, yeah. she's S tier because okay. you need two healers. I mean, but that's, that's very true. Yeah. If you have the option, she moves down to A B. Okay. Uh, Pokey. A for me. Yeah. Okay, Vulcan. A. Okay. Uh, Gotcha Gamer. For now A, but once a better healer comes out, like she's not relevant. I think that is incredibly fair. I think A tier for Bailu is incredibly fair. It really sucks because I do like her alt animation. It looks very fun. Uh, but I don't know, man. Just I, I really don't think it would have... I, I just don't get why she doesn't have a cleanse. I, I don't really see why it would be that fucking OP. Uh, next, we're going to talk about Blade. I'm pretty sure this should be pretty easy, right? Uh, obviously, we all know eighty percent is better. Uh, what do we think about what do we think about Blade here, guys? Any opinion on Blades? <laughs> If you run crit damage main stat blade, he's in the D tier. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, Guava, <laughs> yes, Guava, what do you think about blade? I think if you run full HP and energy rope, he is S plus tier. Okay. Wait, do you actually wait? Is energy regen rope on blade actually a real thing? Is that is that, can I, is that possible or no? Because that would be nasty if it was. That'd be so cool. I think it definitely works, but I've come to find out that if you have enough speed on blade, he doesn't need the ER rope. How much speed? Well, just enough to get him to go twice in a turn. Or, or so 130, 134? Him, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. If can Branya's I, can manipulating I, his... Yes. Go ahead. Yes, yes, Can yes. I just have one? I just have one. Yeah. So I've been playing free to play from the start. Yep. How the fuck do you guys even have options to be like, here's my ER blade and here's my attack percentage blade. How the <laughs> fuck do you even test it? Bro, I've been grinding since the fucking start. <laughs> And, and, like, I've got, like, four artifacts on, on like, three of the characters. And, yep. like, there's 6,000 traces needed per character. Like, it's it's fucking impossible. I can't build them. I can't build different versions of the characters. It's it's, it's literally impossible. Valid. I think free-to-play is a big factor in that, though. Like, the thing is, I spend money just because I'm trying to get that content out. Fair, so I'll fair. spend money yeah. to get some fucking refreshes in so I can get some extra rolls. Like, if I were to compare me to you guys... Dude, over the course of seven days, I probably have 80 more fucking uh, artifact grinds. True, yeah. You know? <laughs> I will say I've been playing from the start every single day. I've let my energy cap three times, I've counted. Uh, and it was only for like 30 minutes max. Um, I still don't have a single five-star energy rope that I didn't have to use my little artifact re-roller specific for, which is the most cringe shit on planet fucking Earth. That's insane, bro. No, it is. It, I have one. I have one. It's on my fucking Bronya. It's the only one I have. I, I don't know why the fuck they wait certain stats to make them harder to get. It's the biggest bullshit in this game. I do not like it. I know for a fact. I know for a fact they wait them to make it harder to get. It's so frustrating. Uh, but that's I saw, saw Brax made a video going through like some data they all collected or something. And yep. so, yeah, it's like that speed crit rate crit damage like the uh and he outgoing healing are the lowest but because you farm the four pieces more than the uh planner ornaments in general yep it feels like energy regeneration is the lowest yeah, yeah for yeah. sure Sam bro actually did a did a did a stat on um they basically 
there was the, I did a video on this, which was basically around 13,000 different uh, relics. They collected it. Um, the chance of getting an energy generation rope of 13,000 pieces is roughly 5%. Uh, it is what? the lowest probability gear to to drop. Yeah, compared to like for example, speed boots around ten percent. Um, crit damage chest is and crit rate is around like around there as well. Like between eight and nine. Uh, energy rope is the lowest at five percent. So so yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Bro, what? Yeah. The fuck? Is that counting the two sets? Because it can go on the wrong set too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's counting on like um between all the distributions. Then, when for example, if you're farming oh, okay. your um similar universe, right? Uh, there's only a five percent chance of you getting an ER rope. For example, like HP attack and defense is like twenty percent to drop those. Uh, as a means, that's yeah, it's kind of cringe. That is so fucking terrible. Also, while we're here, I just need to ask: Is there literally mm -hmm. any reason? why like flat stats still exist like for substats <laughs> or like i don't really get the point like it is it's a consolation it, price it's, it's just an artificial rolling for gear right it's, so it's an artificial way to extend the, the gearing process right like we're, we're all yeah, agreed it's, it's cool it's cool okay yeah, it's just cool yeah yeah you gotta have some some garbage shit in the game to uh yeah obviously make that grind a little bit different at least you can't yeah. get them as main stats in this game oh man, oh yeah bro. thank god yeah, that would suck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in my opinion, I think Blade, the reason why there's so many different ways to build him is because he's so fucking broken. It really doesn't matter what you put on him. He's still going to perform. Uh, I, I feel like people would be out of their mind to not rate him S tier. Not to mention his win competition. The only other real competition for like how good he is meta-wise is Bronya, and they do different roles. Uh, he completely claps Don Hung. It's not even close. Uh, he completely claps Sampo. It's not even close. Maybe now Kafka can make Sampo do more damage, but I'm not sure about that. But I feel like for what he does, I don't think there's anybody who does what he does as well as he does, and you can build him pretty much any fucking way, and he still works. I feel like he's S tier for sure. Yeah. Every yep. time I've used like a support Jing Yuan, I'm like, God, this guy's character fucking sucks. But every time I use a support blade, it doesn't matter their name. They're like level 73. It's like, oh, this guy's good. Yeah. Like it, it, every single time they're, they're solid. Yo, gotcha, Gamer. You got any insight you want to slap in here? I don't know. I think it's going to be a bit controversial, but I think he's like A plus without Brania. Brania like boosts him so much. I don't know. Really? Yeah, but like it's not a complete opinion I have here about him. But the most time I'm using, like, as with Ting Yun, for example, the ultimate, I think it's the only one that matters to him because the mm -hmm. skill that boosts him doesn't really correlate that much to damage. So anytime I'm like building a team, like, I have to include Brania to make him like usable to have enough time to clear the content, at least for the last stage. Again, I'm talking from the point of view, I'm trying to beat the last stage of MOC. Yeah, like for everybody... over world exploration, yeah, yeah, he's amazing. All the time, like he's just so fun to use. Like the whole like sacrificing health, dealing damage, and the whole five stacks obtaining like from taking damage. Yeah, that's great. I don't know. I feel like uh, he's obviously better than Jingyuan, but I wouldn't say that <laughs> he's like, super broken. <laughs> As somebody, I, 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 copped, okay. I, I copped a lot of hate in my video where I had an E6 blade and I soloed MOC 10 um, because you don't use Eidolons in videos. It's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. But I then saw, then once the uh, the MOC turned over, because that was from the previous round's MOC, once yeah. you got into the new MOC that was catered to him, I saw E0 blade soloing MOC 10. That's what I was getting ready to say. As somebody who doesn't even own Branya, Blade is fucking broken no matter how you spin it. I don't, I don't even own Branya, and I can still go into Abyss cleared in four cycles. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But, like, I'm saying there's from my point of view when I'm using but Branya, like, he's literally, like, clearing everything. I'm not sure, like, yeah. how it feels without her. I, but, like, to me, it feels like they're just paired together so well. I don't know. I, I would I, have to, I, like, do too much I, testing. But we, we don't even have that many damage dealers right now to really... Exactly. To, like, I, I feel confusion. like... I feel like every damage dealer is going to benefit from having Bronya. Like, Zeela needs Bronya. Uh, fucking Blade needs Bronya. <laughs> I mean, she, yeah. even, even Jing Yuan benefits from having fucking Bronya. Like, I feel like this Bronya is so fucking good. Obviously, you know, she's S tier, but like, I, I feel like everybody kind of needs Bronya. So I, I feel like he's still S tier even without her, in my opinion. Hell of a pro uh, uh, actually Probably, yeah, obviously. Because yeah. Zealot value drops off immensely without Bronya as well. For sure. Yeah, yeah. So let's put, Bron yeah. let's put Blade in S tier. Uh, should we just go ahead and skip Bronya? She's broken. I mean, everybody knows she's yes. S tier. Yeah, yeah, everybody knows that. All right, cool. Full DPS. Wait, wait, can, can I just say one thing? I, yeah. I feel, I feel there's a, there's a, there's a little bit of a difference in terms of like whether it's optimal to for X unit with the X Y unit uh, yeah. versus 
whether it's viable. Um, as you guys have all mentioned, I think Blade is pretty much viable with like most supports, right? Uh, but whether is it optimal is another question because I think right now, um, in this current context, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, Tekton, you haven't really cleared MOC, but uh, for I think a lot of players, um, the bar for end game content, I wouldn't say it's like super, super difficult. I would say uh, you can technically pair Blade with King Yuin, you can pair him with us, like you can pair with any supports, right? Um, I mean, he can clear MOC 10 for you. And once you clear MOC 10, 30 out of 30, you're basically done. But um, I kind of agree with what Gacha Gamer is saying, which is um, Blade doesn't really sync very well out of supports just because he's a HP scaling um, DPS, right? Because um, Ting Yuin, she buffs attack. Um, Asta, she buffs attack. Yu Kong, she, she buffs your attack. Um, so really the only person that is like giving the Blade his most benefits is Bronya. But going back to whether is it viable, mm. I think he's still viable. You can still clear MOC 10 even if it's not optimal. So so mm. yeah, that, that's my tip. I mean, so, I still feel else. like I still like Ting Yun would pair fine with Blade because she's still just in, in, in like buffs flat damage percent. Like that's her all what, that's what like, I think they're forgetting. Yeah, yeah, just the yeah. ultimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, of course. Uh, so the the other thing is like like uh, like something else that I consider heavily is how e like okay yes I feel like we're in this stage now when when you're theory crafting a DPS character and giving him a rank it's like how many turns does it take them to zero cycle a thing now it feels like we're getting to that stage when you're trying to rank a new dps for like crack mm. i always think about how easy is it to get a three star and i'm like blade is just easy yes you may not do it in one two three cycles but if you're doing it in four five or six who cares if you can just put it on auto when he does it yeah, this yeah, is also sure, where the sure. discussion becomes more nuanced because everybody has different investment. Like there's people who make the argument that they, they zero cycled or one cycled or two cycled, but they have his signature light call and they have his E1 and they yeah. have perfect sub stats. It's like, you can't make that argument and say that's better because you have a completely different investment on your character. Anyways, that's, that's just my input. Yeah. All that aside, we're cool with Blade being an S tier? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, Bronya S tier because she just makes every unit do what they do but better. Yep, yep. Cool. We can save some time. We can just get that out of the way. If you think Bronya is not S tier, you are a. F we all agree, right? Before I say what I'm about to say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Depends. Uh, okay, Guova. Uh, I uh, agree. Okay, I just feel like you're a fucking idiot if you don't think Bronya is S tier. She is ridiculous. She is fucking ridiculous. All right, next up. Like if, you, if you want to save time, you can slap Lou Ultra up there too. I don't think anyone's going to argue that. Yeah. Well, but yeah, but I want to mm. I want I want to jerk him off a little okay. bit. But okay, we we because okay. because okay. we we cool, keep cool, talking cool. about Bronya and every other character. I feel like we don't need to talk about her again. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay. Next, yeah. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to let y'all talk. I got no idea how good Clara is. I'm going off other people's words. I would love to know y'all's experience with Clara. I don't know if she's good or not. I'll just keep it a buck. I'm also. I'll start because I've been I've been the biggest Sparog simp since the game started. I just I Sparog is the coolest character in the game, and is you're never going to change my mind. I like Clara, especially for free to play, because she scales up with your account. You can build her tanky, and she can be a tank. And as you get better account built, you can shift her into more DPS. And I feel like that's just a really cool character to progress through your account. She's not going to be... I don't think she's the best damage because she relies on those revenges and stuff. But that comes down to, are you trying to zero cycle or reliably clear? And I think she's super reliable, super strong, and scales up through your account. That's, that's a really good a really good point is, <clears throat> am I speedrunning this or do I, do I just want to beat it? Because if you have her and you support her properly... You beat it. It just might take a while, but you put your phone away, and it's like I will beat that um, memory chaos floor. I will beat that uh, that echo of war, even on the hardest difficulty. I will beat that. Um, you know, like even though I feel like right now, like I've got a pretty good account, but the uh, if I go in the hardest level simulated universe, and you get like a little sus on some of your uh, some of your <laughs> like picks and your I eidolons, yeah. it's like you get one banged by uh, by Kakolia, and it's like okay, fuck off, like. It's done, but not with Clara. I feel like she, because she can like heal herself and stuff. Like, I feel like she's super safe at beating content, like beyond almost anyone. Okay. Yeah, I think she's very, very comfy. Uh, she's very yeah, comfortable comfy. to use, right? You pair her with here, she, she basically just pretty much just can't die. Uh, but she's definitely not going to be like the fastest Clara. Yeah, you're probably not going to get a zero turn Clara with Clara compared to other characters. Yeah, but she's super, super comfy. Yeah. I was told that she was very good at like farming fast, like in the in like the you when you're farming for a character experience. Is that true? Like, is she a good farmer? I've been told that she's very good at that. I think yeah. you'd want her light cone if you're doing that for the uh, the sustain. You can just solo runner, I guess. 
Okay. Has anyone tried? No, I haven't, I, I haven't actually tried. Okay. So uh, then I guess between, uh, yo, Guava, any opinions on Clara? I think she's great. She does need some socks and shoes in a future update. She but does. apart from that, I use the support Clara like all the time for farming. And uh, those AOE hits on the ultimate are insane. Okay. I, I think she's really good. Okay. Yo, gotcha, Gamer. Any opinion on Clara? I think that her biggest problem is that uh, if you break the enemy or like con crowd control them, uh, they go down on the turn line. And then, you know, she depends really that much on doing counter attacks on enemies. So if you keep doing like uh, control attacks on the enemies, she doesn't really counter attack that much. Obviously, you can build a team that's different for that. Most of the time, you're still going to be breaking enemies. Like, that's the whole point mm -hmm. of the game. So mm -hmm. for me, she is. MOC, she's fine, but like I really enjoy using her for like simulated universe. So I just put an auto run, a big uh, I think it's called, <laughs> buffs, and she just literally clears everything so easily. But I wouldn't call her like completely <laughs> broken or even super good. She's just a really nice character. She has a great design, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. I like her. Like literally, she's yeah. the first character I've, I've been using since the game starts. So. I just haven't farmed like a really great uh, physical set, which I'm doing now with Luca. I'm probably going to give her uh, some of the equipment. Okay. Any other opinions on Clara? And then we can get to ranking her. Yeah, I, I just want to say that uh, she's like, I wouldn't call her S uh, just quickly because her damage is like RNG based apart from her ultimate. But if you do get hit like 20 times, then your damage goes out the roof. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't say S. She's a bit RNG. Okay, uh, so you would say A. Uh, I'm going to skip yep. you, because you said you didn't want to weigh in on this one, which is respectable. Uh, Tash, what would you rank her? SRA? Yeah, probably A. Okay. She's just like, fine. Pokey? Yeah, A, A, A. Hey, Vulcan? Same. Okay, gotcha, Gamer. We all agree, A? Cool. All right. That was low. I thought she was, I thought y'all were going to tell me S tier for sure, but A, okay, seems fair. Uh, a tier, we'll put her at top of A tier, if that makes sense. And then we'll, uh, you know, we'll argue about some uh, minor changes at the end because I do want to make this a number one to last uh, tier list. I don't want to just be like, every, all these are A, all these are S. I want to put them in the exact order. At the very end, we can argue over the, uh, the minute details. All right, Don Hong. Okay, now this is a guy where I really did not want to like him. I really didn't want to like him. Uh, and then I started using him, and I gave him the same support as I gave my hyper carries. Uh, I gave my Don Hung the same support as I give my Zila, and uh, I actually think he's probably a little bit better than I thought. Uh, <laughs> because if you give Zila a Branya, they're nuts. If you give Blade a Branya, they're nuts. If you give a Don Hung a Branya, he's honestly really not that bad. And I mean with like zero fucking investment, because the win mm -hmm. res penetration he gets is pretty good. I usually put him in like C or D tier, but I will say this first one was I think he's at least a B. But I am curious what y'all's opinions are for Don Hung. If y'all think he's been overlooked, um, I don't want to use him just because like I don't like using the characters you get for free at the beginning. I don't like using March. I don't like using Trailblazer. Well, that's okay. I do like using Fire Trailblazer. I think they're very fun. But I don't like using Don Hung because it just it just feels like oh, and here's are the starter characters, and it makes me feel poor and depressed. So I try not to use them. Uh, <laughs> Pokey, I want to start with you. Do you have any opinions on Don Hung? Um, I think it's just a little bit unfortunate that uh, he faces a lot of competition in terms of the DPS department, right? There, there's Sile, there's yeah. like Jingyuan, like all, so far all the limited banner units or even like the standard banner pool 5 stars, it's just, they're just so, so good. So it kind of gets outshadowed there. But it's not to say that he's completely rubbish though, but, but, but yeah. yeah. Okay, Vulcan, what do you think? Yeah, I think B B's fair for him. I just think he's a great free to play unit if you haven't pulled anything else. He's just a he's like he's not fancy or flashy. It's not like Su Shang where it's like you know you get that cool combo where you ult and then you go again. He's yeah. just reliable and just punches it out. It takes a bit of management on buffs to buff him outside the window, so his alt alt is the one that gets the penetration, so that he doesn't have to waste an extra turn because if you like if you buff him in his ult then you take one more turn if you got eidolons or two if you don't yep. whereas if you use it the 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 penetration on his skill your ult doesn't take a turn away from it so it's like that weird sort of so once you get used to playing him that's about his only clunky thing the rest is just really good i mean most people get eidolons now too so you get the extra you know turn when you the slow is pretty decent once you get him to e6 as well so i think he's just a good standard unit but b is about as high as you can put him yeah uh and i don't know if y'all would agree with this sentiment but like 
this is like whether people should invest or not to a unit if they're going to regret it or not, how worth they are for their value. I feel like it would. This is my biggest argument at Dong Hung. I feel like you would be probably a little bit upset with yourself if you're going to 80 and max your Don Hung and work on him, knowing full well that if you are free to play, we get enough currency in this game to guarantee yourself several, several premium banner units. And I feel like you can just pick one of those and you, you just have a unit that's better than him in almost every single scenario. So that's my biggest yeah. argument against Don Hung is that he is good. You could clear the content with him, but literally any other premium unit that you pull just will completely outclass him from here to the end of time. Yeah, I think that's why it's fair. You put him in B and every other yeah. unit, premium unit is above him. So if you look at a list, you go, okay, do I have any of them? No, do I have any of them? Okay, if I've got absolutely nothing, that's what I fall back to. Do we all agree with B or does anybody have anything they really want to say here? I think you guys did a fantastic job covering most of the variables, honestly. Okay. All right, then we'll rank him in B, and then we'll get on with it. Don Hung going in. Oh, he was already there. Cool, he knows his place. All right, here's a big one. I need to know, how good do y'all think Geppard is? I will let whoever wants to start start. How good do you think Geppard is? Don't have Gepard. him. Anybody have Geppard's parents? I, I, I think I can, he's I, the... Okay. Oh, no, go on, go on. Oh. Uh, I think he's, I mean, Luwacha is like the best sustain now, probably. But if your units are not tanky, you you want a shield over those healing. Uh, because if you get one shot, Luwacha is not going to heal you. You're dead. Whereas Japard's shields are just like, they go insane. Um, and his energy is like 100, I think. He gets it up really quick. Uh, Slapper, his, his signature light cone is insane. You slap that on him and he's going to carry your teams. So I do want to ask this, because I'm not sure if you have experience with this yet. I have never had a level 80 unit with an 80 light cone with like plus six relics that is capable of getting one shot. Is Have y'all ever been one shot in the game like frequently? Does that happen a lot? I've been thinking probably like what, like the gorilla maybe? But uh, the gorilla generally takes me down to about 20% if I'm topped off. Uh, is, is getting one shot like a big problem in the game? I, the only so, guy I can think of is the motherfucker that chunks the spear. If he hits you, because he, he hits twice every time. If he chunk, if he hits you and then chunks the spear, he could very well one shot you. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I guess there's not so much about one shots. This, it's about consistent damage and then not healing it. Okay. I think the, the centaur guy can uh, can be a little risky too because he like he targets you, hits you, and then yeah. stomps you. And I think that one can do quite a bit of damage as oh, well. Yeah, but like, true. oh, that's true. The deer. The deer, yeah, the deer fucked yeah. my and shit the deer, up. The deer is crazy. I think I think I blacked that out from a part of my memory of how mortified I was by that shit. He <laughs> rolled my shit, bro. <laughs> what about the, you, Pokey? Thing, sorry, the, the I'm gonna let Pokey real quick. Uh, Pokey, do you have any opinion on Geppard, uh, Pokey? Um, I think it's he's pretty rely on team comps. Um, if you're gonna be running him with somebody that prefers shields, like for example, like Yan Qing, then I think he's pretty much indispensable. Like not even Luo Cha can, can do what Japard does because um, if Yan Qing takes damage, um, even if he's heal back to full, you are losing the, the stack, right? So for some characters that need shield, he's probably gonna be S tier. But for most team comps, and like, if you just want to send a sustain, like if you just want to heal some kind of stuff, uh, then probably not gonna be as strong. Yeah. That's a good point. What do you think, Vulcan? I was just saying, like, early days, like, I remember when, you know, it, like, in the first few weeks when you got people at, like, level 60, 70 trying to push MOC 10, it was like, everyone's like, swears by him, you need him, you can't do anything without him. Now we're at the point of, like, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're at the point where it's like, do you, do, like, how often do you need that big shield, like, like you know what I mean? Like the the funny thing for me was someone asked me like while I was streaming and they're like, "Do I, what what light cone do I get from the store?" Because everyone's like, "Japards is the best," and I'm just like, "No, no." In where are you in the game? Do you actually need that light cone? Like, is it gonna help you? Because it's good, but it's like it doesn't really offer you anything to increase the ceiling of your account. It's like you know what I mean? It's for when you're struggling. So that's yep. the funny thing about Japard and Shields in general is like, now that we're getting more healers, it's like, do you bring a solo shielder or do you just bring a healer and then just respond to it when it's needed? Because if you bring just a shielder, you can get in those situations where you can't sustain and then you're boned. Whereas back in the day when you were bringing a healer and a shielder, he was very valuable. Now, I, I've heard people talk about Geppard a lot. I've only ever heard them talk about his shield. I understand his shield is fucking huge. And I know when he dies, he gets back up one time, I believe. What else does he do besides just big shield? Energy. 
freeze comes back to like freeze his if people sleep on his freeze heavily um for instance you know the guy every time he uses a skill or an ult he get he sanctions and throws his damn fish out on the field yeah you could Geppard freeze him and then you can spam all your skills and ults you want and you don't have to worry about this filling up the sanction shit he's like basically it nullifies his ability to go into ult mode i guess so and if you build Geppard with a good amount of effect hit rate or unlock his e1 you can guarantee a freeze literally freeze whoever the hell you want to freeze with him so that's another value that people sleep on with Japart. but yeah. other than that um his aggro value is incredibly fucking high but the, i think the biggest problem getting on another topic with shielders right now is we're just missing units who need a shielder yang shing's the only one who really needs one right now off the top of my head that's a good <laughs> point i didn't think of that that's true uh she, he does also have some synergy with march 7th i don't know if he would run march 7th with geppard but i guess it's it, yeah he was you know more shoot because things are sh uh shot but the, or uh, they're shielded uh so then we would probably say Geppard's like what a tier i think he's a a would anybody yeah, disagree with a tier i think he's best shielder but i think at the moment in the current state you put him in a yeah because it doesn't matter how good you are at like laying bricks if you need to build a glass house so i guess that's a, a good point <laughs> a good point to make that's a good way to put it man all right so let's put Geppard. Honestly, I'll, I'll put i'll Go ahead. I'll, okay, personally for me, I'll, I'll actually put him in S. Cause okay. if you guys have seen some crazy Japart, um, but definitely not now, no. But if your sh if your defense is high enough, like three thousand plus, and if he's fast enough with enough ER rope, his his ultimate shield is pretty much like a permanent update. You basically just don't take damage how if, much, if your Japart is good enough. How much? Uh, how much energy recharge and how much speed do you think you need to make that happen? Um, you just step on your ER rope with your speed boots. Plus one, three, four, plus plus with the standard he ER rope. He gets hit so much. He's, he's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he gets, mm. he gets hit so much, and the ER rope works when you get hit. You get even more energy, right? So technically, you could forever have an unbreakable shield. But when you that reach that stage, very that's another topic. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah, 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 yeah. Really but definitely not for the, for the start of the game, though. Yeah, that, that's, he's that's so that. goddamn slow, though. That's the problem. You gotta get his speed up. <laughs> My fucking slow. Yeah, yeah he's the second yeah. slowest yeah. in the game, I think. Okay. So there is a very cool build that you could go on Geppard, but it's going to require a lot of resources. What I'm gathering. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's because and getting stuff. an energy recharge rope is it, 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 you can't. It's not possible. <laughs> yeah, I've tried. Yeah. I've tried. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's definitely yeah. difficult. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, next up, we have. Ooh, let's just go. Uh, okay, we're gonna. Okay, this is okay. This is gonna be a back-to-back -back slammer. All right. Uh, Herda, <laughs> thoughts and opinions. In my opinion, she's the second worst character in the game. Would anybody like Yo, to she's defend S2. her? Okay. In my opinion, she's at um, Okay. 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 I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm actually not trolling because yeah. okay. maybe she's not that great in MOC, but in my opinion, she's like one of the best overall mob farmers. I, I don't. I'm not sure if you guys actually go and clear the overall mobs, but yeah. she just clears them like so efficiently. That like like right now, I'm, I'm actually using her down in my in my overall farming team. She's literally level sixty and she can clear mobs so easily, right? But mm -hmm. in, maybe in MOC, not that much. But in terms of farming, I, I'll just put it as yeah. I okay. think in Simulator Universe, she's one of the most cracked units for the Remembrance Path, too, dude. Her scaling True. with the Remembrance Path is fucking insane. But uh, I, in terms of the MOC, she's nice. If she if there's a high ice scenario with a lot of mobs on the field, you'd be surprised the damage output she can pull off, like uh, Vulcan mentioned in that one MOC. But, I mean, other than that, I don't think she's dog shit. <clears throat> okay. You, okay. I would use that word very... <laughs> Very specifically, but <laughs> we here you go. Uh, anybody else have any opinion on Herda? They want to have their the have be heard. I think as we get more uh, enemies that summon stuff, because if you if you're versus one boss, you're going to get one talent, and that is going to do zero damage. But mm -hmm. like with the deer, more summons, she she goes absolutely deco mode on them. Yeah. So okay. I'd say like or the wolves. Right, exactly. there's, there's no wolves too. They summon. Yep. Okay. Uh, I would put her in D, but I'm curious where y'all would put her. So feel free to just, uh, well, but what do you think? What tier? It, there's a C between B and D, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would put her C because okay. I don't, I don't think anyone. Hmm. Okay. I don't mind putting her D and then seeing at the end, because it depends if we put like everyone B and she's sitting there by herself, I feel a bit bad. But, uh, a D, and Drew, D Drew is already, she'll have company with Arlon. She'll be the only C unit. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. Uh, C or D. Okay. What do you think, Smack? I'm going to go with B minus. Fucking B. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, Tashed. I've never built her and I don't know enough. I'm okay. guessing she's probably just like very mid. B. Okay. Yeah. Pokey. 
I'll I'll give her C after factoring that she's she's pretty decent for for multiple moves. I don't think she's as bad as Arlen, so so I can't justify giving her. G okay, G that's fine. Yeah. I'm I'm glad that we agree that Arlen shit Vulcan. Yeah, I think C's good. Okay, gotcha, gamer. Uh, he ducked out, man. Oh, he's out. Cats are going crazy. Yeah. He's oh. No, text. no problem. No problem. All right. We'll put Herda and C, and we will keep this going. That is way higher than I thought that she was going to get. Dude, <laughs> it, takes, so it, takes, it also Why takes 30 seconds to farm level up materials with her. She's fucking insane on that's that true. one. And, so that's yeah, a yeah, huge yeah. bonus for me. And we pretty much get a free E6 with her, which is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. all right. Yeah, uh, that's a good I'm point. not arguing with C. Man. F in the I chat really for Gotcha Gamers Cats. So it's, it's a rough life. Uh, next up, we have Himiko. Any big Himiko advocates here? I'm a Himiko connoisseur okay. of sorts. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, I got her. I got her, and I decided to build her fully, and, like, she slaps. Uh, the thing is, is, like, her her level 80 trace, uh -huh. I, feel like, I feel like there's a lot of characters where the level 80 trace is either, like, trash filler or it's like what actually turns them on yeah. right. and with hers it's 15 percent crit rate when she's got like 80 percent hp or something like that that's huge. and like 15 percent crit rate is like five or or even six rolls of yeah, crit huge. rate it, it is a lot of crit rate it is like a full artifact of god to your crit rate and like i feel like that does matter quite a bit when you're looking at your overall crit ratios um 15 is nothing to sneeze at thrown into your kit and uh, like especially if you have Lucha who's healing uh, you all the time, or or you just have a well built healer, like I think that condition of having it is always there. So the more fire, the more fire shields you need to break, and and the more um, the more you can, you know, up her crit stats. I think she she's decent. She's better than everyone said, is what I'll say. Okay, so out of curiosity, just before before everybody else goes, what would you rank her on a tier list in your opinion? Uh, I think like a well built one is um, just like A tier. She, okay. Like like again, like I don't think she's hyper carrying beyond like any of the main units. Like she's yeah. not Blade, she's yeah. not um, Zila, but she's she's good. She's and, functional. And, and have you used her in MOC? Sorry if I sorry if you said that. Is she? Yeah. You, okay. All right. Yeah. Like, That's cool. I think she I think she falls off against like some of the bosses just because it takes like longer to break those shields, so she's not popping off. But yeah. if they're summoning and they have fire shields, like. It's good, or or as long as you have other people's elemental coverage, because it it doesn't matter if she's breaking the shield. It's just like if other people are, and then she can pop off and like like my um, she does like twenty five, twenty eight thousand damage when she does her AOE to everything, and so the more enemies there are, like it starts to scale up to like thirty, forty thousand damage because it's there's like five units on the field all of a sudden, and I don't know. I think it I think it's pretty cool. I like her. Do you think she's the worst five star? And if you don't, who do you think is? Um, because is I've been getting my chat spam with star? Curse of Himiko for like three months. It's the worst. Um, I, I guess it's like, can you do, uh, can you do without her? Like people yeah. are always say like hook single target damage is crazy for a fire unit. So it's like, do you need a Himiko or could you just build a really good hook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can't replace Weld. Right. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I have a feeling that. She like if you look at her damage numbers, maybe. Yeah. But like we already said, like, do you need Gepard? Do you need Bailu? Yeah. Right? Like it, it's like exactly. it's like hundred percent. Um is it is it easy to replace them? You don't need Himiko, but like is she completely replaceable? Like in AoE content, she might have a spot over yeah. um other people. Yeah, because so. Himiko reminds me a lot of Deluke and how Deluke was like actually pretty good when the game first came out. I, I do think I do think she will have and same thing and I think the same thing for Bailu and Geppard. I feel like Bailu and Geppard are going to be uh, uh, examples of, of of withering, examples of time where uh, the more and more uh, characters uh, the game releases, the worse they're going to get. Even in the four star scenario, because I, I feel like Lynx is just going to fucking power create Bailu so hard it actually makes me feel bad for anybody who invested in her because uh, that. I mean, I, I heard she was nerfed today because she was like yeah. that ridiculous. Uh, which is which I'm fine with it. The game gives us free four star characters that are insane. That's great. You know, people can save their money, but uh, it's very hard to, uh, identifying who the worst five star is. But uh, yeah, anybody else have any crazy opinions about Himiko that they want to share? I think a uh, lot of the reasons. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, we got three. Okay, cool. We'll start with, we'll start with Guava. <laughs> uh, okay. yeah. 
Um, I think a lot of the reason why she was uh, undervalued at the start is we didn't know like how she worked properly. Because when she breaks um, an elite, she gets three stacks, right? That's all yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, she maxed us. Yeah. yeah. So again, with the harder thing, like more AOE uh, content is coming out. She she goes insane, and um, you don't even need her to break, as they were saying. So she can just vibe on the team, bring up a big follow to up attack. I think she requires a lot more investment to perform compared to like a blade or a kafka but uh when you have her well invested she's great okay yo pokey um i think she's pretty much in like a similar situation as herta like if there's a lot of aoe mobs for her to clear and if you pair her with Himiko, like you have seen the from the start of the game, right? Like her Himiko, they just auto like clear all the mobs. Yeah, if we can if we get this kind of content in the future, I think I think it's gonna be decent. But for now, I think she's just around where her is, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, Vulcan. I just wanted to a bit address a little bit of misinformation from Gorba there. Oh, I'm he was just talking. Oh. He, he was just saying how, <laughs> how how Kafka's easy to build. Himiko has crit in her traces. Do you know how, how hard I'm struggling to get my get my calf grip up 50% crit while I'm keeping it around 160 crit damage? It's fucking hard, man. What, you're building uh, crit, 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 crit Kafka? Crit yeah, Kafka? In the chat, I posted my stats at the moment. She's 126 speed, 51 crit rate, and 159 crit damage. I'm just, yeah, like, I just like, yeah. I like having crit damage on my screen. Like, I can't help it, man. You're half joking about that, but... The, Kimiko needs the crit. Kafka doesn't need the crit, you know? Yeah. Oh, That's no. I was just taking the piss. I know. No, no, no. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Not having to build. I will say this. I, I, I would never, ever, ever build a crit Kafka because I am so fucking tired of getting that goddamn substat on everybody. Having a character yeah. that performs without that shit that. is so. Just two stats speed and attack. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Fuck all this. I need speed, attack percent, crit rate, and crit damage subs on every piece. Fuck that, bro. That yeah. shit is ridiculous. I'm so tired of that it. garbage. Uh, <laughs> where do we all think Himiko sits on the tier list? Uh, Guoba? Uh, a, a to B. Okay, Smack? I'm going to give her uh, bottom of A. Okay, Tash? Um, bottom of A in like, even in AOE situations, sometimes like, like, I, I just don't think she's like this S tier unit, yeah. but like if she, if she's not in AOE situations and you're not getting a lot of breaks off, like, I think she does descend into B tier. Like I, I like her. I love her. I would defend her, but I just yeah. don't think she's like crazy. Okay. Pokey. <clears throat> I, I can't justify her placing above B, honestly. Okay. There's still fair. so many other units. So I really can't justify her putting it above yeah. B. Yeah. Vulcan. I feel like base fair. Cool. Uh, Gotcha game. Are you back from the uh, the great cat attack? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Don't just cry. Where would you rate him I, to go on the tier list? Right now, my current build B tier. Okay. But, uh, I'm guessing she's gonna be A tier once I build her with Kafka, because there's this really interesting team with like uh, Pyro. I mean Fire team, uh, like Himeko, Asta, and Kafka. Really excited to try it out, but for now, I think she's like B. And I, and you said earlier, like she's like Diluc, but I don't really think so. Okay. Because literally in 1.0, Zila came out, and we had Yanching and Zila as main damage dealers. So she's not That's true. really like Diluc. That's true. I just think she's like Diluc because they both red and they make fire. Yeah, yeah, red hair, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next up, we have Hook. Anybody building Hook? I have not. I have not done shit with that character. I think they're great in lore. Their story quest was incredible. Uh, I heard she was pretty damn good, but uh, do y'all have any experience? Any of y'all like proud hook advocates? I will never She was that one of my first uh, ever DPS because at the start, I didn't even want to pull for silly. Yeah. And I was trying to clear Steam the universe. So hook was basically my first DPS. So a lot of nostalgia when it comes to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't think right now she's in a very good spot just because... There's just so many better things out there. Yeah. That's a shame. I was really mm -hmm. hoping somebody would be like, bro, Hook is the best. Come over, join the malls, bro. She's so good. <laughs> I just feel like every time, dude, it's like that, what's that guy's name? Hijo comes out. Everyone's like, he's fucking insane. And it's like, he's a four-star DPS. He gets outscaled as soon as you get a good five-star DPS. And I feel like with Hook, it's like good, 
fire single target damage. Yeah. But then there's there there's the S tier um, five star units that just shit on them eventually. And uh, I just don't think I would ever recommend anyone build a four star DPS like ever because you could invest in a god tier Ting Yun, a god tier healer. Uh, like I, I feel like I would rather have good supports and then save my resources for an S tier like DPS to get supported by all those other units. Because like whether I'm using Blade or I'm using um, Celia or Zila or whatever, my supports are universally good for the account forever for every DPS that comes out for the most part. Yeah. And the DPSs are like somewhat situational. So if you're now a four star DPS, it's like, it better be content that you desperately need fire single target. Like, I, I don't know. I just don't like four star DPS. I think that's From fair. a meta perspective, I think you make a very valid point. Uh, yeah. But I think uh, down the line, as people start getting uh, their teams together to clear the uh, memory of chaos, they're just going to be looking for somebody who's more creative and, and bringing that ingenuity into the game. So like Hazel, you brought up, he's the only mm -hmm. person going around kicking the dust off people's shoulders in a new fire. Fun fact. I mean, punch yep. parachutes off. <laughs> yeah. Things like that, like sell the point home for me. But I 100% I agree with your logic. I think it was very valid. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Vulcan, thoughts on Hook? I've honestly never built Hook. I've got no idea. All right, then the Pokey Smack and uh, Tash, uh, what, where would y'all rate Hook? Unless oh, Scott's a game. Do you have anything to say about Hook? Yeah, I think she's better than Himiko. Okay. Fair. Uh, what... Yeah, because, because uh, like, usually you don't really need that much uh, AoE damage for the first, like, two waves. Usually you're facing off against two bosses, so or elite enemies, and Himiko's damage is actually pretty good uh, once you build her properly. I think she didn't get changed that much compared to CBT, so I'm basing off that. Did you mean to say <laughs> level? Hook? Did you mean to say hook for that damage is pretty good actually? Did you? Because you said yeah. Himiko. No, no, sorry, not Himiko. Uh, hook. Okay, hook. No, no, not not Himik, not yeah. Himiko's damage. No, no. no, her damage is beautiful, but not good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I, I think Hook is actually pretty good for people who don't have, like, two solid damage dealers. But once you get, like, a, any five-star damage dealer, like Yan Xing, even, like, Jin Yuan, obviously it's not worth investing into her. But she's, like, a stepping stone for free-to-play players if you get her. Yeah. She, since she's, like, a gacha character, so I'm guessing, like, we'll put her, like, in A tier. Or at least uh, at the first position in B tier above, like, Himiko. Okay, uh, but, let's go down the line. Guaba, what do you think for tier? Uh, yeah, I think B, there's also the fact that she can sustain, like destruction kind of have sustained some units. Okay. So what you can do is you can uh, solo sustain with Fire MC and bring Aster and Hook. Fire MC heals themselves, they have tiny shields, but it, and then you have Aster's speed, and then you have Hook's self-sustain. Uh, so first is Fire Week, she is insane, but then like, you can also just brute force with any DPS, so I'd say B. Okay, uh, Smack? Mono Pyro's broken too. Uh, I, I'm staying out of this one because I don't play her. All good. Filter, so I, I have no point. Yeah, respectable. Uh, Tashed? Yeah, I haven't like fully built her, so it's hard to say, but like probably just like B because of the four star factor. Okay, Pokey? Yeah, same. B. All right, Vulcan? Yeah, I'm good. All right, That's fine. Okay, yeah. then we're good to go. All right, Hook, B tier. I'll put him above Don Hang. You know, I'll put him above Himiko. This seems fair. All right, next, let's talk about Mid Yuan. Uh, hey, yo, buddy, that's my boy. Let's go. <laughs> Get it out of the way, man. Oh, we about we about to fight words up in here, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, bro yeah, that yeah, character right. is fucking dog shit. Uh, absolutely terrible. Uh, I find it's it better than your sorry ass Sila. Yeah, you're right. I find it. I find it fucking ridiculous because this should be a thing. When when Jing Yuan reaches ten stacks, Lightning Lord should attack oh, immediately. He yeah. just should. There's no yeah. reason for it not to do that. Okay. Also, when Jing Yuan is fucking stunned, Lightning Lord can't move. I, I just find it so ridiculous. His kit makes no sense. His numbers are so low. I am so glad I'm not one of these dummies who got baited by the simulated universe elation showcases <laughs> before he came out. Uh, Kafka's better at doing his job a, a thousandfold. And she enables dots. And she's like a fucking support five-star DPS. Or you can call her hypercarry, I guess. But Kafka is going to continue getting better, whereas Jing Yuan is going to continue getting worse. I think he's horrible. I would put him 
okay, not horrible. I feel like he's high B, low A, but from how much people said he was going to dominate the meta better than Zila, you're an idiot. Uh, the character is just not that good. Uh, but I would love to be proven wrong. That's what I think, but I'm an idiot. So what do y'all think? Anybody ready yet? Let's start with Pokey. You got anything to say? Um, yeah, I've been following this whole Jing Yuan debacle for like since before he came out. Like, cause a lot, a lot of players in CN, exactly like what you said, they were like in the anticipation. Okay, we're go we're all gonna skip silly cause Jing Yuan is like so OP, so good. Yep. So there was so much hype about him, just to be absolutely destroyed, right? Like yeah. all the things you mentioned. <laughs> why are they? Why is his Lightning Lord's base speed at sixty? Why is he? Why does he get crowd control and his line not doesn't go? Uh, why does he need so many proper setup just for him to work when other unit needs like half his setup and can do exactly what he does, right? You want to clear AOE, Cynic clears AOE, right? Kafka clears AOE, right? Even yep. Blade clears AOE right now. So I'm not really sure what sort of value Jing Yuan offers uh, as compared to the rest of the five stars, right? Okay. Okay. I think a lot of people compare Hunt Path characters to Iridition Path characters when their job is literally to deal AOE damage and not single target damage. Uh, for, exa for example, you can't put Sila on the team with another DPS. She's the only DPS that is going to be on that team. Whereas I can put my Jing Yuan with a blade and literally slap anything I want to because they can actually play together. You can't do that with a Sila, but you can do it with Jing Yuan. I will say, though, in the beginning, he was overhyped 100%, but I actually never once saw anybody on... Uh, the on youtube compare him and Scylla in very fair scenarios where one's weak against lightning and one's weak against quantum of course it's like people take this argument and they just i don't know some somebody starts it somewhere the fire starts somewhere and then it grows and then everybody just agrees with it without actually validating anything but i will say this i do agree with tecton saying kafka power crept and she absolutely one did. i also think million percent i also think blade power crept him as well and that's where my argument for jingy win started to diminish because i was like damn these these two characters are just as much as i love them they're outright better than my boy it sucks and like kafka yeah. isn't a little bit better than jingy Wan. yeah it's like by a lot yeah like yeah. a and and dude if people think kafka is good now Wait till the other five star in the hill he's come out. She is mm -hmm. going to be ridiculous, which is uh, terrifying because yeah, exactly. she's already yeah. so good. She's outrageous. Yeah. Uh, yo, uh, Guaba, what do you think? Yeah, he was uh very overhyped, and then I think he and Ting Yun both got nerfed, right? Yeah, so it was uh very unfortunate because like he needs speed or Bronya. Uh, and then he needs Ting Yun or his damage. Can't is take like the potato a... seriously. <laughs> this, is very, this is a very serious at his potato. Wisdom, man. Dude, I'm just like, no. I know, <laughs> man. Oh, God. <laughs> but oh, I think someone in my Discord was saying they put Jing Yuan's crit relics on Kafka and she like outperformed him. Yeah. <laughs> Like I said, she oh, power crept him. No. <laughs> that made me upset. I will say, though, I yeah. do think it, and respectfully, Guoba, I think it's an awful argument to say anybody needs Ting Yun or Branya. Like, every, like I, kept, I think Tech mentioned it earlier. Every fucking body needs Ting Yun or Branya. I don't know a single that, yeah, that's true. It, other than Blade's fucking broken ass that doesn't need those two characters. <laughs> it's just mm. insane. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, gotcha, Gabe. You got anything to say about Minyuan? Minyuan? I don't know. I think I like him a lot. Oh, really? Like, okay. to, me, to me, he's like a really good splashable unit, uh, especially if like the enemies have lightning weakness. I think Gotcha's Mag even said himself, like, uh, you don't really need that much for him. Because, for example, if you're building Kafka, uh, usually you still need like a sample with her. I mean, you can build her without sample, but Jing Yuan is literally just slap him on any team. Uh, and that's why what I do most often. Yeah. Then again, I'm kind of biased because I do have his light cone. And honestly, I think what happened actually with Jing Yuan is, uh, I don't really remember the term, but uh, Hoivers was like testing uh, the cons consumers, seeing like how will they react if they put a lot of power into a light cone, because I think that will, that's what they were going for. But without the light cone, he's like kind of shit. So you, you need the light cone for him to perform well, at least in my opinion. So. Um. He needs too many things to perform well when other people literally just needs like barely like half of his things and performing even better, which is like kind of, kind of doesn't yeah, justify I, my opinion. I think it's different for Kafka versus Jing Yuan because Jing Yuan needs specifically Bronya and Ting Yun, where Kafka 
First of all, I've used Kafka by herself just now. She performed great, but she can, you know, she might want a Luca. She might want a Sampo. She <laughs> might want an Asta. She might want a Pela. Uh, you know, there's, she might want a Ting Yun. Like, she has a bunch of different options for what she could use, but I don't think she necessarily has to have any specific one. Chat, shut the fuck up. That was not my damn... Sorry, they're keep on saying... <laughs> my old hit... No, you can't. God, I, so I, I want to say... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Hilarious, man. Yeah, yeah. I want to say, I, I find it hilarious when you guys say he, he needs Bra uh, Branya because I just got Branya yesterday on my pulls with Kafka. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> and um i've been a genuine main since day one and all i've ever used him with is ting yun and asta or ting yun and silver wolf he he doesn't need a branya in any scope of the imagination he performs absolutely well without branya i have literally cleared every single memory of chaos with genuine because that was my carry so from a standpoint i just asked you guys and i'm not saying yeah. I, I do agree he got power crap at what point are you saying he's a bad uh character like from a how how fast you can clear the floor 10 or like i'm just so, trying to understand y'all's perspective yeah about my that. my perspective i'll go on because this, this is a pretty hard question to answer uh but for me uh i think he needs bronya to do the things that people think that he can do uh um, oh, okay pre-release where they're saying yeah jing yuan can do all of this no he yeah. fucking can't unless he has exactly this he needs light cones yeah. he needs all this jazz uh yeah no for sure I, i'm a firm advocate you can clear the game using uh anything uh that you want i mean shit you can use arlon if you want uh mm -hmm. but but i think to reach the levels of quote unquote hype and showcases that were announced before the release, you need those characters, and I don't think that's very realistic to run uh, consistently uh, for me. And I also I just think, think, yeah, go sorry, God. Uh, no, you're good. I, I interrupted the shit out of you. You want to finish that point? Go for it, buddy. Yeah, I just, I just, when future banners come up, I would feel awful if I didn't tell people who are meta players. Because I know there's a lot of meta players. There's not a lot of free-to-play players, even free-to-play streamers that pulled Jing Yuan because they're not good enough to beat the game without OP characters. So they pulled things like Jing Yuan. They got their fucking absolute dicks clapped off. And I want people to know that if you really are pulling for meta, then pull for Kafka for that role because she does everything Jing Yuan does and then better. And also, fuck anybody who pulled for Silver Wolf. We'll get to that later. <laughs> that is what I'm saying. Oh, tech talk is so <laughs> You're hilarious with that shit. I will say, though, with Jing Yuan, my only final argument yeah. is that, again, he's an erudition unit. They can have variables. Hoyo versus the fucking king of, uh, what do you call it, indirect buffs. They can, an erudition unit could very well get an indirect buff that brings them from mid tier to god tier, and his follow up attack is the highest scaling in the entire game. So a little bit of copium on top of the uh, ice cream there. All right. Uh, so where where it's would we? Problem is being backloaded. I where think, I as think a final note. I think we can all shit on Jing Yuan or praise Jing Yuan as much as we like, but I just want to know where do we think Jing Yuan sets? I think Jing Yuan's at the bottom of A tier for me. Uh, let's start with Gotcha Gamer. Gotcha, where do you think Jing Yuan sits at? He's definitely above Himiko, that's for sure. Yep. Definitely above Hook, so I think he's not at the bottom, at least for now. Okay. He's a, a, I can't see the tier list right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, so top of B is Himiko and Hook, so I would put him at the oh, he's, bottom he's of definitely, A. He's definitely... Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> They're in B tier. Yeah. Oh, then he's uh, obviously even uh, more better than Jepard. You think he's better? You think, you think he wants better than Gepard? Really? Well, yeah, because Jeopard was only good uh, at the start when people were struggling with resources to keep stay like to stay alive. But right now, like I think all of you pretty much said it that uh, tanking right now is not that relevant once you have the resources. Like built up the characters to level eighty, uh, the whole team is like they're fine to survive. Anyone is fine. Wait, 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 wait. I I hard disagree with that. Like, um, I think for most players, you definitely still need a sustain, even if your whole team is level eighty, unless you can do like a zero turn clear where you just run three to point one hyper carry. But you definitely need like like a tank. And when it comes to Japart, he doesn't really have uh that much replacements, right? There's there's Luo Sha the sustain on time. But for Jing Yuan, there's like so many different DPS like doing things better than him. So I don't really think, in that sense, he's, he's better than Japart in that way. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I also don't think that Jing Yuan's better than Gepard. Uh, what do you think, Waba? Uh, yeah, I think bottom of A. His his damage is too, like, like Kafka, she made backloaded damage frontloaded, and she still has backloaded damage. And Jing Yuan's pretty much just backloaded, and if you get CC'd, you're done. So, I think bottom of A. He's still better than Himika, I okay. think. Okay. Uh, gotcha, Mac? Top of A, no question. Top of A? Okay. M-dash? Um... 
yeah, like he's he's better than Himiko for sure. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. It's just interesting that uh, it's one of the first banners where um, you probably should have just skipped him and got the light cone, <laughs> and then <laughs> and, and, and waited for like a new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His light cone was the yeah, 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 yeah. No, I don't know. His, his banner was really like good. Divine His banner had like Ting Yun and and Shu Sheng, which were all really, really good, especially the Ting Yun. Uh, True. So the True. real W was the Ting Yun. My, my my biggest argument is always just like um like a. A primo gem is a primo gem is a primo gem, and it's like I gotta pee. Right. If if all of a sudden a month into the game or three months in the game you find out like Blade exists or Kafka exists, and it's like I understand they they might be different elements or they might do slightly different things, but like as the game goes on, you start to recognize like holy shit, this character is just so much lower value than than these other ones, and so I just always feel bad when people end up pulling a character and then a patch later it's like blade exists and it's like holy shit this yeah. guy's so much more valuable um you know that's always the the, the frustrating thing so i i am i am one be of careful with especially with your money guys i'll always say that is like be careful wailing out on these characters that are going to get power crept uh two two weeks later that, that is why i yeah, genuinely sure, sure. feel like if you yeah. are pulling for a character because they are good meta wise like you will always be miserable like always because mm -hmm. like if then that they stop performing the way that they perform and now you're left with this husk of this character that you only pull because they were good and they become good. You actually waste a character. But if you pull a character because you like them, you enjoy their play style, you enjoy their lore, you enjoy how they look, like you will always win. Not, sometimes yeah. they all come together. I was pulling on Kafka even if she revives enemy units. I don't care. Okay, I mean, I got fucking naked for her yesterday when I was summoning on stream. That was a fucking blast. I won that character so goddamn bad it was ridiculous. And at the end of the game, the game's like super fucking easy yeah so like people always roast d luke but i like e attack e attack like i like his play style and i can clear everything in the game with him yeah. so it's like it's not the end of the world if you don't get the the perfect character if you get himiko instead of jing yuan like you're still probably going to have great area of effect and be able to clear the content just maybe slightly different or at a different time but like this game is not going to um you know what once you're I always say that because people complain about Genshin Abyss or this, it's not a skill issue. It's a time issue. You yeah. just don't have enough artifacts. You just don't have enough experience in your weapons and characters a lot of the time. And so um, your shitty character will be able to beat the content and they might take a week uh, of resin longer, but it's, it's not you. It's time. It's it's the energy. I've I've started to learn a lot with the primo gems, the primo gem, primo gem. Uh, I just I'm gonna keep it a buck. Okay, I have seen every character that's coming out for the next like 29 years. Okay, there's like a whole <laughs> ass list of like 50 new characters that are coming to the game. It is mm -hmm. ridiculous. I am not worried about Honkai Star Rail. Not even one milligram. I am not worried about this game at all. The characters coming look great. I feel like a lot of them are gonna perform great. And uh, anybody who thinks that we are going to be on the Zhangzhou Low Fu until 2.0 is a fucking moron. There is no way. Uh, I think they're handling this game great. I, I'm, I am worried about 1.4. I think 1.4 will be a dead patch, but I think 1.5 is going to be great. Uh, but uh, learning about what characters perform and how long they're going to perform for is, is pretty damn important. And uh, what elements are coming out and when they're coming out is pretty damn important. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't like I don't like full on talking about everything I've seen publicly, but uh, I mean, there's a lot of good shit. And I feel like this, this game is being handled in levels that I don't understand why Genshin isn't handled at anymore because it really seems like the development team uh, kind of has their shit together. Uh, that being said, I am firmly under the advocate where I do feel like they could be pumping out per patch. I think that is a fact because it is way easier to develop this game uh, than it is to develop Genshin Impact. Uh, but as far as like story going and characters coming, uh, I, I feel like we're very taken care of and uh, people need to be careful with their resources. Uh, little side tangent there, I apologize. Uh, I feel like we all agree uh, that uh, Mid Yuan goes middle of A. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Cool. Uh, we had we had some bottom A's, top A's. So I just put them right in the middle, and then yeah. uh, if yeah. we want to argue about that later, I'm always down to duke it out. I know a lot of y'all are gonna have to leave, so if anyone wants to fight for their spot, we can totally do that. Uh, the longer this goes on. All right. Uh, so Kafka is the best unit in the game. We're talking about Kafka now. Yes. She's the best ever created. Any disagreeers or what's going on here? I uh, I'm still figuring out between her and Bl I, I, Blade's fucking amazing, man. I'm not gonna lie, and that's not my bias either. Take my bias out, the dude is still fucking cracked. But I think Kafka is definitely competing with Blade for me personally. I think they're both better than Ceiling. <clears throat> oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, I will say this shit, and I'm gonna need you. Actually, we need to say that for Zila because I have a very big problem with Zila. Uh, she's still she's overhyped. 
Oh, and I want to get to that. I want to get to that. Uh, I think Kafka currently is the best AOE damage dealer in the game, who's only going to get better. I don't really understand how Blade will get better with future units. I do understand how Kafka will get better with future units. Uh, unless they come out with like a crazy fucking single target buffer, but I also think that'll benefit Kafka the same amount, whereas we only have one five-star ability damage dealer. We don't have anything else. So I think Kafka is currently the best AOE damage player in the game. Would anybody... But yeah, and Pokey, you seem to be smiling a lot about this. What, what's your opinion on Kafka, Pokey? Um, no, no, I was just moaning because my chair is going crazy. Okay, oh, but okay. anyways, I, I, I think Kafka, in terms of AOE damage, she's not that um insane because the multiplies... Okay, let, let, strictly based on AOE... I think Jing Yuan actually does more AOE. It's just that his damage is a little bit backloaded. Um, but what mm. Kafka does offer is, like you said, she's definitely going to get be better with future units. There's going to be better 5-star DOTs. She's probably going to be the foundation of all 5-star DOT comps, right? Because she, she's pretty much the only one they trigger. Unless they release another character that can also trigger DOTs. But I, I hope that that doesn't happen, yeah. Yeah, because then we also don't have an Erudition Relic set, and we also don't have an Inhility Relic set. So mm -hmm. those will also, I, I mean, I think we need a buff to erudition really bad, like across the board. They need something because almost every erudition character, uh, underperforms in my opinion. Uh, that was Jinx Karen. Uh, Jinx Karen just needed to come out as a free to play option. Was that, is, that, is that really it? Is it that, is that, just is that pull 10 Jinx Karens? Oh, I Jinx Karen. I I'm so spewing. I didn't pull for it for my QQ. Oh, I fun. think uh, in, in opposition to what Mr. Pokey said, I think he's severely sleeping on Kafka's ability to amplify break effect dots. If you, if oh, you yeah, break I, she, she can skills, definitely amplify break effect dots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shits on every damage in the game. Have you have you seen Kafka do that yet, Pokey? Because I yeah, just yeah, did yeah. it today. Um, if, you, if you pair her with like Shu Sheng or even like um, Luca, and then you manage to break with their physical break, it's like hell of damage because physical break is like the biggest break there is. Dude. Yeah, it's, it's hell of damage. Dude, so you Asta, oh my god, you Asta, and then you pop them, and then you speed her up, and then she E pops them, alts the double pop is. Chat, shut the fuck up, guys. That was not 1.7k for my whole alt. That was just a hit. It didn't even count the dotted. Shut the fuck up. It is the cool shit because it is so much damage. It, I, I don't know, man. It gets me excited to just think about. Uh, but I, I'm obviously a coomer, so I'm going to shut the fuck up. And if y'all have anything else to say about Kafka, go ahead. I'm going to go piss. Feel free to talk about whatever. Woo! I'm not saying anything I'm saying is a factual, by the way. Like, it's it's all up for debate and discussion. <laughs> Does anyone else wish Kafka was a real human woman that you could have sex with? Oh, bro. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's... <laughs> in no way, in no way. In no way. Uh, oh, I I'm just doing the podcast <laughs> Type one in chat. Yeah, no, we're just doing it. Yeah, Taz, my, it's, 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 <laughs> he's gone. He's gone. He dropped it and left. He's, he's out. He's <laughs> out. Oh my god, dude, that's fucking hilarious, man. Uh, you crazy. know what we need in real life? We need a we need a sword art online, bro, so we can go inside the games, bro, and really live that shit. <laughs> oh my god. Do you okay, imagine how, how crazy that yeah, would be, bro? Sword art online he, in real life. Put a headset on. Go in there, and you're actually with Kafka. <laughs> and touch your boobs, dude. Oh, dude. Come on, guys. So back to this. The camera shift on her technique, though. The camera shift on her technique is like S tier. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. man. I think like, about that like, all the time. If, I have, if I have an enemy that's not weak to lightning, I'm still using Kafka every time because that camera shift is just perfect, dude. Like, I actually every time oh, yeah. I used her technique. Yeah, yeah. I used yeah, Kafka. Her technique, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Her technique. Her I used technique. Kafka on a unit that was not weak to lightning or wind. It was just weak to fire, and I used Asta, Sampo, Kafka. Like she still performs. Like because uh, she can, uh, as <laughs> long as one unit can pop the dot, she still just works. Like Zach, it's really you, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah you missed up? what I, I I had basically bought her. Imagine if in real life, which I feel like we're not too far from it, they develop a technology where you're able to put a headset on, go into the game, and actually hang out with uh, Kafka. Oh. I, I was doing that already last night. I was just, it's You're called VR. That? Yeah, so I put on my yeah, VR headset. I went to VR chat. Then I got people to twerk for me as Kafka. It was sick. Oh, my he, God. He was in Yungo's Roblox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> uh, I feel like uh, we, we surely we all agree that Kafka's an yes. S-tier unit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's yeah. not forget, though, all the fuckers out there who were trying to say she was mid. Yeah, holy that. fuck. Yeah. What the fuck was going on with that? Bro, I told you they do this every time. Every with every character, they said it with Blade. They did it with Blade before he came out. They yeah. said, "Yeah, Blade's mid." I'm like, 
Oh my god, dude. It, it's like I, every character that's been good, people say they've been bad. Every character they say is bad has been good. It's yeah. like, what is going on? I mean, the amount of Kafka shit, all oh, garbage, easy skip, over and over and over again, classic mid. Shut the fuck up, bro. I've been told that this is people's coping mechanism for real, for real. People joke about the word copium, but I heard they yeah. do this to cope with the fact that they can't afford the character or get the character. Okay. Oh, that, probably. That's... You mean you mean in this game where people are spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars for their anime waifus, they they absolutely have buyer's remorse. They have addiction to this game. They have, <laughs> yeah. dude, dude, they're fucked. They're, like I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you're telling me that they're not coping. It's like the guy pulling the slots at the casino. He's like, the next one's a win, or do yeah. you know what? I lost today. I'll win tomorrow. Absolutely, yeah. it's coping. Dude, oh, the yeah. worst thing is. Uh, and Pokey, I'm going to tell you why people call me an awful person. I'm about to summarize it for you right now. This, this is what happened. Yeah, sure. The problem sure, is sure. that people don't know that the characters in the game aren't real people. So when I say a character's bad, they say, you're shit talking my girlfriend. Dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. Did y'all see the tweet that Genshin put out uh, the other day? So, like, uh, okay, okay, so in case you guys don't know, uh, there were Genshin players that were their cats because of Scarmish, right? No, oh, shit. no. Oh shit! Wait, you didn't hear this? That's crazy. No, I, I yeah. that's not I real. A bit. That was it. <clears throat> no one's that fucking deranged. And if they are, then yeah. you know what, honestly, yeah. yes. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, hey, you... I don't blame them. Uh, <laughs> so this was a for anybody who doesn't know, this was a really big issue, right? This was a really big issue. Uh, and so Genshin actually had to put out a tweet yesterday, and a lot of people say a lot of games disclose this in their openings, tonight, or a lot of movies say that this shit isn't real. No, they literally put out a public tweet because they had to to address what was happening with Skarmosh over in Siena. I'm not If y'all haven't looked into it, look into it. It is disgusting. Um, and they had to say, this game is not real. This is a work of fiction. These characters are not real. And they literally tweeted this out like four or five days ago. And I, I've never seen a anime game have to make a public tweet about that. For, at least for me. I've seen people put it in the openings. I've never seen people have to publicly tweet it. Yeah, question yeah, though. Like, like, why would they killing like, cats over a carrot? Be, okay, I, so Scar I'm not, I got yeah. no idea. So, so Scaramouche had Back a short so where he became a cat, Scaramouche. And uh, people really don't like Scaramouche. Uh, and so because he was a cat, they said, you know what? Uh, to, to show Hoyoverse how much we don't like Scaramouche, uh, I'm going to kill my cat. Yeah, that's called like they're going to be a serial killer one day and they need to get jailed. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, what, no, my, so. my question is, my yeah. question is, Do you have is a like, on it? did they... People? Did they? Th there was a Reddit post, and it was like, "Here's all the drama about Scaramouche." And I, I started reading through it, and I was like, "Okay, like maybe some of this, but also, is this just like a fanfic? Like this guy's like, you got it, like in China, bro. Trust me on this one. There's all this crazy stuff happening. It's it reads like a fanfic. Like the guy's like, and then uh, they started uh, painting themselves in the same colors and sucking each other's dick. Like it, like it starts to develop." <laughs> No, seriously, you you start reading the Reddit post. It's like it's like, oh, that's that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Oh, that's that's kind of crazy. And then it's like, did that fucking happen? I like, mean, did that actually? I, is there any proof of this that this happened? Right. It just it starts getting deranged, and it's like, uh, uh, I, 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 I was don't told. Know. I was told. I'm not gonna look into it. Uh, I was told that there were photos of this sent by the person who did it. Uh, I don't want to see those personally. Uh, I've on. grown to believe what I've been told. This was not reported by me. This was reported by multiple other sources. Uh, but I've grown to believe that anybody who would make a TikTok song about talking about how people should come to my house me and set me on fire and then that get 80,000 likes on TikTok and 3 million views, I don't doubt anything that this community is capable of. For Genshin, not Honkai. But that's just my opinion. So I, I, mean, I people am... People underestimate how much evil is out there, man. There's oh, yeah. Out there. Anyways, I don't know how we got there. <laughs> Anyhow, let's talk got about... Real fast. Let's talk about Luocha, a.k.a. the best healer in the game. Yeah, By far, tier, not even close. He's he plays himself. He just power crep every, every fucking viable healer or shielder. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, the best ever. Strip. It, well, k keeps you safe, but also lets you play aggro because you heal while attacking and being aggro. So it's like mm. just yep. like he's a win. Shit. It's a win, 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 win. No. Yes, exactly. There's not a lot of uh, you don't have to waste a lot of skill points because it's on field for two turns. So people are cycling through full heals and then. Yeah. yeah. 
Now, can I just so, say, Mtash, I'm impressed, brother. I thought I didn't, I didn't know you was keeping up with Hawkeye like this, bro. <laughs> yeah, I thought you was playing Diablo. <laughs> yeah, Mtash bro. was in these streets, but and we did not know it, bro. <laughs> well, it's because people really overestimate how, like, I mean, when you're as smart as Michael Tash, let's just keep it a buck here. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't need to play the game for as long as everybody else. He checks in. It's the win character needs to win set. Okay. The mm -hmm. tank needs to tank that right it's mm -hmm. not hard it doesn't take that much long to research it. you figure it out gets out you know has another and also, kid, plays video like, games there it is i want to quit but i'm fucking addicted <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like i hate i hate these gotcha games that i'm playing on my phone yeah, yeah. all day that was a conversation I wanted to have on the podcast with the family dynamic and managing time with the with the games, but I mean, I guess we'll save that for another time. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, mean, this guy's a podcast. To DNA. DNA. Yeah, it's uh, we're we're, we're going to be doing a whole bunch more. We have another episode where I'm getting uh, uh, four of the voice actors have confirmed to come on for the podcast. We're going to be doing a voice actor episode very soon. That's cool. And then uh, we're going to be doing even more like we did for the first episode where we just talk about random shit and, uh, you know, get things going. But uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying this so far. But just just a way to try to bring more creators together because uh, it is very hard to collaborate in this uh, in this community for uh, God. Yeah, you're doing an awesome job doing it, too, brother. Yeah, I'm 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 yeah. trying. People have made it very hard, but I am I am definitely trying considering that I'm more. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's talk about Lou Ocha here. Uh, the thing I want to talk about, surely we all agree that he's S. Um, yeah, but I just want to know how does everybody feel about DPS Luocha? Has anybody tried it? No, Mr. Pokey, what it's do you possible. think? Yes, yeah, it's dude, possible. Yes, dude, I knew you thought. Okay, okay, but okay, but yeah, but, yeah. but, but mm -hmm. uh, I I do think you need some kind of idol investments with him. Oh yeah, right? his E one gives gives attack. His E six is is all type rest down by twenty percent, which is kind of huge. But um, I think it's definitely possible because right now, with the amount of attack you're giving him. He, a single like auto E pretty much just heals the credit back to full health, right? So you could stack on crit ratio and let his out do like a gazillion damage, but um, that's really I wouldn't say it, it's the it, it's a traditional it, way. Yeah. yeah. Is the issue um is the issue if you're trying to do like DPS lucha, you're getting too much crit rate and crit damage, and then your attack is lower, so you're not healing enough, kind of thing. Um, it's more like if you're trying to build crit ratio, uh, crit DPS lucha. You still have to make sure that your attack isn't like completely dog shit, because if not, then he's not gonna heal at all, right? So oh. you kind of need you need you need attack, you need crit, crit ratio, and, and you still need speed, and I guess some mm. kind of like effect rest to trigger your like broken key all that kind of stuff. So it's 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 a it's a tall order to to build, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. My buddy got really lucky with relics, and he uh, he plays full DPS Luocha. Uh, he's free to play as well. And uh, seeing his alt, alt hit for 200,000 damage uh, in uh, at Memory of Chaos versus five targets was fucking hilarious. I've never seen anything like that. Once again, the, the stats are completely unrealistic. Uh, but yeah, my buddy Laro69, he streams on Twitch, by the way, guys. Feel free to go follow his channel. Uh, his DPS Luocha is fucking hysterical. I love it. I love dumb builds like that. I don't think it's realistic at all, but it's because you have an option. Because it's content creators, we obviously want to, you know, showcase as many builds as we can. I think it's a lot of fun. I think I think DPS Luo is something to look into if you are bored and you want a pet pot project, guys. But uh, other than that, I feel like we all agree. He strips, he dispels, he auto heals, uh, he uses no skill points pretty much ever. He does it all. He takes nothing. He's fucking incredible. Oh my God, I love Luo so goddamn much. All right. Let's talk about March 7th. Uh, and later I want to talk about full damage March 7th. All right. Uh, what do we think about March 7th? Uh, Tash, you want to take it away? I feel like we all should know March 7th pretty pretty well. Um, I use Clara with her, and it's like a pretty cool little comp. It just helps um, them focus Clara more and then keep Clara alive. But I haven't super invested in her. Yeah. Um, the, but the, the issue is she also freezes. So it's like if you're then freezing with your counterattacks, you're just freezing – then you're almost hindering that comp as well. So uh, she's fine, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be a situation where she pops off. But uh, I just she she just seems like in the middle for me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anybody else have anything to say about March seventh? Um, as somebody that didn't get Bailuo apart at the start of the day, because they were the only two healers, right? Like, if you didn't have Bailuo apart, you pretty much had to use Natasha and I guess March seventh. So as someone in in that situation and I would just like to say that she really, really helped me with, with MOC. Like, so, so, so much. Like, I, there's no way I could have crept up to MOC 10 um, without March 7. So, 
Shout out to March. Like, she's, <laughs> she's definitely she's helping fantastic. me out. Fantastic. Right. I yeah, agree. Definitely, she's definitely. fantastic for free to play. Uh, and then she got power crept by other uh, supporters. But I think if you don't have those units, what he said is very true. She's fantastic. She's not even bad. She just got she got power crept by other characters. And you don't have to AD her either. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like you that's the good thing. Like on my four star account, she was like, I found like on the four star account where you only had Natasha and then like it was March or Trailblazer. March could solo tank, solo support a team. I didn't clear 10 with that, but I cleared nine. And March was like way better at solo March, supporting a team than everybody the out, And then also run a poll. She can cleanse, um, like to see it's what pretty chunky shields of her meta viability, um, and then tell me the results and for each. Character. Can she heal as well down the road? Like if you she get idol on e six, yes. which which not everyone's gonna have, but um, yeah, yeah, uh, and, yeah. and like she's not gonna die because you're scaling defense, like you're you're maxing defense. So it's like, yes, you might not have as much healing or whatever, but like she won't die. Hopefully, I ran. And, it. Uh, I actually ran effect hit rate and energy regeneration, but they, oh, so I, so I, you were freezing them and you're spam freezing. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, but, gotcha, Gabe. You got uh, any opinions on March 7th? Not really. I don't, I'm not really using her at all. I only use her in CBT, so I think she's fine. Okay. I, I have yeah. no opinion. I, I, of... I used to run the team comp of March 7th, Yang, Jing, Pela. Uh, and if Memory of Chaos had an ice weakness, they it's you can't lose that comp. It's insane. Like, it's so goddamn good. Uh, March 7th, once again, the amount of resources that you have to invest into her to get her to work is like practically zero. I was running her with a zero hand, uh, you know, a plus nine boot with defense, a plus like six chess piece with defense, and then a plus zero hat with a little bit of HP subs and defense on her. And, and she works because her shield scaling is fucking ridiculous. And the only reason why you bring her there is you just... Can't run, can't run, can't run. Fucking pop you with the arrow, pop you with the arrow. AOE, fucking, fucking bomb bomb, range in the sky. Like, she's so goddamn good, requires no investment. I feel like she's incredibly slept on. And she has a cleanse, which is incredible. Like, I don't know. True, I, true, that's I, I a huge think, value. I think she's incredible. And uh, I, I feel like she can see a lot of play. I also am the advocate, if, if I had resources and I was a content creator, I would do full damage March 7th. Uh, because you don't you don't need it you don't need to build her full defense you just don't uh her, sh her shield will never be broken ever uh so i i would go full damage and try that shit out uh but that's just me i don't know if her numbers are low but the, I, I would like to see somebody do that and then tag me in the video or something because i feel like there's got to be a way to make that shit her multipliers are shit i mean yeah they probably are uh but if I still everything scaled off defense that'd be cool but yeah uh, she's got some defense and some attack that's the that's the cripple yep yeah yeah mm -hmm. Uh, hold on, I got a, I got a comment here. A big paragraph I'm gonna read here. Hey Techie, I have Jing Yuan and got him. No accident, and so went for his light cone and got it. But you guys talking about how bad Jing Yuan is and Kafka is better and will be more broken in the future. Can you tell me in your opinion and the other guy's opinion? I want five star Don Hung. Also, hey Techie, I have Jing Yuan. Okay, uh, never mind. Ignore that guy. So that was a okay. I'll give you your advice. You got Jing Yuan and the light cone. You have to delete your account now. <laughs> sorry. Um, Reroll for Kafka. You have to restart everything. Sorry about it. Yeah, but, sorry, yes, man. Sir, Those are yes, the sir. rules. Yes, uh, you fuck. March 7th, yes, I would put in low A tier. Uh, where would you all put him? Uh, Vulcan? It's it, like, do you put her in the same tier as Japad? Like, way lower. I... Way lower. Yeah, well, you're saying the same tier as Japan. <laughs> yes, but but same tier, but lower because Jeopard Jeopard is like big shield, right? But Marge is like big single shield, and then you break the shields with her AOE, and then you can cleanse, and then you can also shoot him a whole bunch. I don't. I feel like it's fine, but you tell me, you want to put her in B or what do you I, say? I'd put B and play, play it safe. Okay, uh, what do you think, Gotcha Matt? That B for sure. Okay, uh, Pokey. Um. Yeah. Same. Okay, Guwa. Um, so I I didn't get I didn't get at it here, but the reason why she I I think she's a bit annoying to use using her skill every round if you want those shields. Mm -hmm. Um, but then again, she brings her freeze as survivability. Uh, she has cleanse, and that on a shield is pretty insane. 
Okay. Uh, I don't know why you guys are laughing. Is there something weird Every on the time screen? You look up, I just can't look at the fucking potato. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fuck me. And it's like it's like <laughs> philosophical. Like these DPS numbers, and it's just a potato floating around. Yeah. Divine voice <laughs> comes out of a potato, bro. <laughs> yeah. Also, DPS March. Oh. Um, my friend sheeted it. I wouldn't say it's uh, I wouldn't say it's that great, but it can work. Um, and the shield numbers are not actually that low. Um, yeah. Can you do me a favor? Keep this much. Can you just do like some shifty eyes like over to the side? Because because whenever you do like a little side look, it's the best. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Potatoes. Oh my god. Yo, dude. why why is there VTubers when there should be potato tubers? Just know, gotcha man. gamer. You got yeah. to get in on that, bro. You sleep with oh. brother. Uh, yo, I'm crying. I can't. Tash, what, what do you think? What do you think March seventh is? Um, for like free to play, don't have a lot of characters. I think she is like kind of like low A tier, but just because she does bring value. Uh, yep. The better your account, she starts to move down. I think and gets replaced. For sure. me. What, what do you think, Gotcha Gamer? Um, early game A tier, late game B tier. Okay, yeah. um, I think I think that's totally fair. Uh, we'll put uh, we'll put March in the top of B tier. I feel like that's super 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 fair. All right, next up, let's do somebody fun. Uh, let's do a whack one. We have a couple more to go. We can probably do these a little bit quicker. Uh, I'm gonna ask you guys for any like jumping opinions that you want to say. If we don't have it, we can move forward. We can get the we can sure. get the rank going on. I gotta fly speed in 20 on. minutes, guys. I gotta go to work. Yeah, we speed run one one minute per character. Yeah, we will we will zoom this shit uh, for sure. All right, Natasha. Uh, I feel like she's incredible. Uh, I would put her top of A uh, for sure. Uh, uh, heal, AOE heal, cleanse. Uh, I think she's actually pretty skill point efficient because I mean, a lot of times I don't even need to use her E because her alt already takes care of it. Uh, but I would put uh, Natasha pretty highly up. Uh, anybody have any opinions about Natasha? I would say Good. it just depends on your freaking account, but yeah, go ahead. Cool. Yeah, we all need a second healer. Um, I will say this I'm going to put her above Bailu. Do we disagree? I disagree, but I'm I'm not disagreeing enough that I care to argue it. Like, okay. Go. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. Uh, and she's easier to build than Bailu because she takes less resources than a five star, and she has a cleanse. Uh, but you know what? For the sake of chat, I'll put Natasha right behind Bailu. Just it's a nuanced discussion, man. For to sure. be fair, it really is. For sure. <clears throat> but, well, we'll save that for later today. It's nuanced, but uh, they're both great. Uh, I just like <laughs> Natasha better. Uh, Payla, uh, how are we all feeling? I feel like she's incredibly slept on. People think she's a lot more niche than she is. I think she's a lot more universal than people say. Uh, reducing defense by 40% is fucking ridiculous. Uh, Guava, what do you think about Payla? AOE 40% at that. Yep. Yeah. She is insane. Like, Silver Wolf does a lot of uh, defense shred, resistance shred on a single target, but Payla for AOE 40% is insane. And uh, her energy, her talent... I mean, you don't even need to max her. You max her ultimate, you get her talent to like five or seven. She can ult every three turns or even two turns if you're using the uh, free Silver Wolf like him. You pop that with Windset, she goes like, she she's faster than Zila at that point. That's nasty as fuck. Uh, gosh, Matt, you got any opinions on Payla? I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I think she should be at uh, somewhere at top A. Okay, Tashed? Yeah, and value has gone up over time for for me for memory of chaos and the new region stuff. So yeah, and she got a buff Very because uh, now that dot damage dealers are becoming more relevant in the meta, uh, her defense shreds, shreds or scales even more. Uh, so I think she's fucking incredible. Pug, you have anything to say about Pela? Yeah, I think she's she's really really good because like what Goba said, if you run her with the um Silver Wolf tutorial like cone, um, she can pretty much get ultimate every two turns by just using auto text. So she doesn't even need to use skill points. And then you have a she pretty much have like almost one hundred percent uptime on a defense break, which is which kind of insane. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we'll I guess we'll go around and save some time and uh because this is going almost two hours. I promise you guys two hours. Uh I'm gonna say she's high A tier. Uh what would y'all say? Yep. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. For, yeah, I always uh, put her somewhere near Pella. I mean someone near somewhere near Asta. Yeah, yeah, for I feel sure. like they're both Okay, mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about Xing Chue. Anybody got any crazy opinions? I have no idea. E6 Xing Chue, top of A tier, if you ask me, bro. Yeah. I think even S at E6. She is insane. Yeah. She's that no good at fucking E6. fucking idea. But, and, but easy, and are we talking easier? Uh, let's, talk yes. let's, e let's, let's talk about something realistic for players and uh, um, E4. I think that's realistic for. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fair. E4 is good. Yeah, E4 is good. I A with E4. Yeah. Why? 
I think S is a bit of a cap, but I mean, you know. Yeah, wait, why, why is she that high? I don't understand. <laughs> he got to, like, she, uh, she does potato, like man. mad damage for for monk. That and the thing is, right, because um, let's just say if you're a player, there's like hard stuck on MOC. Let's say you, you just couldn't for the life of you clear MOC 10. But if you play uh, Qing Chue and you just keep resetting, um, because this is what you you feel just reset, right? You, you will eventually get like the perfect hand, right? The heart of the cards, and she'll just like destroy the enemy, and it will allow a player to transition and, and create the after the MOC. And she's the only character that does this, because no other character is like as RNG focused. So she has a very very high ceiling. It's just that you need to be patient enough to grind out the the RNG of a card. Space. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like that's important for people to know that like if you the the of a high ceiling is eventually you can get that. So if you are pushing for content, that's very good. Uh, so yeah, I think that's, I think that's probably pretty fair. I, I think the thing with her at E0, that like pre E4, she's just very like average because people like, she's not RNG, she's not so RNG pre E4 because pre E4, you just use her basic attack and like you basically rotate through basic attack, enhance basic attack, and then cheese it with the ult to get another one. Because like by the time you draw those cards through your whole team taking two turns, it's pretty consistent. It's not that bad. Once you get that E4, it is like, it's like, honestly, it is the funnest thing in the game. Cause like you press that skill, you're like, come on. You don't see the icon. You flip it again. You flip it again. You flip it again. You're like, fuck yeah. And then it just nukes the shit. And then she goes again. She just nukes the shit. It's, it's uh, it, uh, I love QQ. She's the best character in the game by it, far. Is she not? It, you say she's the best character in the game? No, no, for me personally. Oh, like, okay, I mean, okay, okay. Like, the whole package. No, but I'm her sure. damage is huge. Like, I can show you my QQ. She's at, like, I think she's at, like, 130 or 140% crit damage. And, like, it, you can proc that thing so early. And once you're E6 and, like, you do two skills um, and then you proc it, if you get that follow-up, you're doing, like, over 100k damage. Minutes, guys. You're doing <laughs> over 100k damage at the cost of one skill point. Yeah, uh, and is she not skill point hungry? Depends. Like, if if you want to play, you can play her either way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so then, where would y'all put her? At E4. E4 high A. 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 Holy a. shit! A. Okay, a. that's a shocker. All right, if you have any opinions that you feel like need to be said, feel free to just cut in and say whatever you need to say uh sampo feel like he's probably high b if you have uh, uh a kafka probably a tier would we all agree with that his e4 is like ridiculously good his e4 is really yeah good. yeah, yeah he's, his, he's good regardless and, mm -hmm. and it works on his on wind shear from breaks so it's like i'm glad you had damage that. if you have i didn't know if it worked on his yeah. break damn wow that's yeah, 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 five stacks from his yeah, talent kind of crazy Okay. All right. And so just what is E4 you doing other win characters break as well. Like when we look to the future, other wind yeah, shear yeah. characters. As, as long as it's players. a it's a wind shear. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So we want low A or high B. Uh, high B he's B still because he's niche. He's really only good with uh with Kafka. If you ask sure. me. Yeah. If you other don't have Kafka, that, it's probably better. Yeah. Sure. We'll put him in B then. I think that's I think that's one hundred percent fair. Okay. Next up, we have Zila top of S because everybody knows she's broken already. Yeah. Sure. Yep. I, yeah, yep. I prefer now, Kafka over her. I, I do want to allot three minutes to this. Um, I think Zeal's AoE is not good. I don't know why it's being considered S plus. I don't think that her AoE can compare to Kafka's or Blade at all. Uh, I think it's one of those scenarios where they, uh, she was one of the initial characters released. The hype stayed with her till today, and they still think she's at the top because of the hype. I'm telling you, she is not as good as people make her out to be. Most people have her signature light cone, and they just don't include that in their arguments, but they include that in the argument for every other character for some reason. Yeah, uh, I, I, just, I just don't get how, like, okay, so Kafka's damage is about... 5% lower, according to Pridwin, on uh, single target damage, uh, and she's considered S tier. And then Zeal's damage is 43% lower than Kafka's in AoE, and she's still considered S plus tier. I don't get that at all, but maybe somebody can explain that to me. I'm a, is it just because Pridwin's just dumb or what? No, they just pasted her single target damage because you can't account, like, how do you... Uh, because they're not uh, they're not accounting for... they. I think it's how the info. They're not that? accounting for... Yeah. Trucks. That that's my biggest problem with a lot of that. Box. How do you even quantify that, bro? Like, yeah, you, you can't. Just, I, I just yeah. assume every team composition. It doesn't make sense. And then, yeah. then I hear the argument over and over again. It's like, oh yeah, if your Zeal one shots everything, she's really good at AOE. 
I cannot do that in Memory of Chaos. Surely it works in farming. <laughs> Who the fuck cares? Who is one-shotting everything in Memory of Chaos? Oh, please show me. Like, I, the problem I, in Memory of whales. Chaos, it should, it should be looked at, at like when you get like the double bosses. It should be looked at as like cleave on two yes. target. For sure. And she can't do that on two target. She's just single target damage at two target. Yeah, Chet, show me your Zila one-shotting a two-boss encounter. Okay? They can't. You, no, can't. no one's is doing that. Like, well, she's really good at clearing trash. Nobody's worried about clearing trash, bro. They're worried about clearing fucking bosses. Nobody is building unit to help clear the trash from Memory of Chaos. It's about boss. Oh, it drives me insane. I still think Zeal is incredible. I, 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 I yeah. did build her to clear trash, but um, in, in Memory of Chaos, we should do a just... we should do a showcase <laughs> off, bro. Somebody was on full only account. I was I was struggling with like the the the, the ice. Uh, it just, oh the, no. Star only free, you know just give me a break but it man uh, heard it was fun it i was fun. i will yeah. say really quickly my um i have some like d rank artifacts like i feel like my as the world tiers have gone up and the memory of chaos has gotten harder my zila is falling off a little bit and like she can be insanely skill point hungry and yeah. if you're trying to like buff her um like with ting yun as well like between those two it's like you better not need to heal and so it's like, if you are one banging them, it's not an issue. But if you're not one banging them and you're trying to support her, then like, I think she, she does like start to really fall off a little bit. Um, but in most situations, if you have a well-built one, S tier. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I just feel like I'm not worried about the situations where I'm one banging people. I'm worried about the situations where I'm not. Because I just really feel like Zila, Zila uh, like excels at beating shit you can already beat really, really, really well. But uh, for bosses, I mean, I, I just feel like she's very overhyped. And that's coming from me, guys. And I love my Zila. She's one of my favorite characters in the she's entire amazing. universe. She's amazing. Yeah, I, I just don't think her AoE is as good as people think. Uh, because objectively, I'll just say it, it's not. It's not as good as people think. I'm just, her cleave is fucking shit. Uh, she's Bro, still S. But... I've had people Wait, come I'll, in I'll, I'll, I'll raise you guys a question yeah. over here. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's say like, because I've been thinking about this for, for quite a while and we've had some chats. Um, If you're an AoE character, let's say you're against, like, for example, MOC 10 right now, the first half is the two decaying shadows. Um, is the like, super crack. Um, if you're using an AoE character, then you clear it in, like, five cycles, six cycles. So technically, they're both still alive or until the fifth or the sixth cycle because they're both yeah. alive. You're using AoE to clear both of them at the same time. But if you're using Silly, she can... You can pretty much just give her all the buffs and she's just focusing on this single target. So you're probably going to warm the decaying shadow maybe from like the third cycle and then kill the second one in the sixth cycle so in this sense your your chances of failing i would say is a lot more uh a lot lesser since you already got rid of one of the boss right and you, you only need to fight one boss remaining so that's why i think and this also kind of ties back into why i think um aoe is not that significant right now because mm. you clearing one monster first and then clearing the other one you're taking less damage right there's only one guy left Whereas compared to if you're using an AOE unit, you need to clear both of them at the same time. What if they both are alive and then they just let go of their life? For example, uh, the King Shadow, they have the nice stack attack, right? What if they both let them go? You're probably just going to get destroyed. So that's my opinion. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. And that's very fair. Uh, my, my problem is, is that a lot of these scenarios for a lot of uh, potential DPS and theory crafting is uh, single target versus three targets. It's like, well, a lot of the time it's generally three targets for uh, the latter half of Memory of Chaos, which is probably what, well, not probably, what everybody is struggling with. Like people, you, similarly the universe is really not that hard. Farming is not that hard. It's about who can do the most two target. Now I will agree. One boss very, very, very quickly will help you. If you beat one boss and you generally win, uh, clearing them both down at the same time isn't as efficient. But uh, yeah, uh, it's it's just very hard to gauge uh, a Zila versus a uh, Kafka's AOE DPS. It's just incredibly, incredibly, incredibly hard. I, I think where Zila actually really shines is that a lot of bosses summon minions, and those minions mm -hmm. usually have really low health. So you can easily trigger her with surgeons. Like, for example, the guy that revives summons two minions, uh, Svarox who summons his hand. Like, there's plenty of minions who, like, or elite bosses or, like, enemies who summon stuff. And, like, that's where she actually shines in, like, yes, AOE, you could call it. Mm. That's, like, the best part because you can trigger her resurgence. Yeah, no, I guess that's fair. No, 100%. All right, so I'm going to put her in the top of S. Surely we all agree with that? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, next up, we have Serval. High A, low B. Or a little bit low A, high B. Yep. I haven't spent a. any time with her to be cool. Fair. Uh higher or lower than Jing Yuan at E4. Definitely lower <laughs> than Jing Yuan. Not even a question. Yeah, lo lower than Jing. 
That's Are we sure? Watch the video once, though. I don't oh. know. And Tash, important. I don't fucking know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, Xing Yuan's better than her. Sorry. Okay, I'll I'll put just by a little bit, so she'll be right behind Jing Yuan. Uh, all right, Silver Wolf. Uh, one of, if not the best unit in the whole game. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. Cool. Really should not be talked about. Guys, she does it all. She removes the strategy from a turn-based strategy game. Uh, she's pretty much cheat codes. Uh, if you pulled one, it's because you're dumb uh, and you can't play the game <laughs> the right way. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just go to the next one. I'll go to the next one. All right. Uh, next up, Sushang. Uh, I think Sushang. I, I think Sushang's amazing. I need I one more know. Eidolon for E6, and then I want a full commit to her just to see. Yeah. But uh, she got like break effects, speed. Like she's kind of like little mini Zila or Zila, except she's, physical. She's cool. She's one of the four stars DPS that you can't go wrong building up because she's actually a supportive yeah. DPS. So you can't go wrong even building her up. Like the when you mentioned building up four star DPS is a ways right. to might better. She just supports whoever the hell your main DPS is as long as their shields are broken. Her combos are also nasty. Like the E mm -hmm. alt E is fucking nasty. Dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I love my Sushan so much. Yo, Poke, you have anything to say about Sushan? I think you really um for the most part, you ideally want to use her in an enemy that has physical weakness. Because yeah. yep. while it is true that you can bring her against enemies as like, as long as they're broken, right? Like like uh, what Gotcha's max here is if they're broken, she can has uh, additional sword stuns pro all that kind of stuff. But the multipliers for that is like really really low compared to her actually breaking the target so yeah. um i would only bring her against enemies with physical weakness so yeah a little bit niche in my opinion okay no i think that's 100 percent fair uh where would you where would you rate her pokey um i would just say b just b yeah b high b or low b because i'm thinking high b <laughs> can i say mid b <laughs> sure that's fine uh yo, yeah, go yeah on. What, mid -B, mid -B. what do you think about sushan so I'm unsubbing from Poke just from that comment. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think Sushang is amazing. I think she's at least A. Uh, she can give herself attacks percent, damage percent, speed. Mm. Uh, her E1 is like one of the best E1s for four stars, maybe the best. Uh, yeah. I think E1 is necessary because um, then you can bring her as a sub DPS. And if your main character breaks the enemy, she doesn't use skill points and she still does uh, big damage. Yeah, I think she's did, A. Does she yeah. get A one? Does she get a refund on the skill that she uses to break yes. an enemy? I thought yeah. I tested and, that and uh, it didn't work. Uh, no, no, not that. Pokey, uh, that will be the top comment on your next video if you talk about Sushang Pokey from Guoba. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. straight up misinformation. Get him, Guoba. Get him. Yeah. <laughs> get his ass. Get his ass. Uh, <laughs> right, 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 but yeah, right, uh, so right. I, I think I think let's do what uh, high high B low A. I feel like that's very fair from how we feel on this call. Yeah. I don't know if people know this either. Her E4 pretty much enables her to max out uh, the break effect, physical bleed effect uh, with 10% more put into her sub stats. Yep. That's sick. Uh, uh, Ting Yun. S tier? S. Yep. S, S tier, no but push. behind Bronya. Yeah. 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 Uh, the best four star buffer for sure. Uh, she does it all yeah. extra lightning damage, uh, more damage, more energy, uh, enables so many fucking characters to do things that they can only dream of. She is absolutely incredible. Uh, physical MC, I'm going to put in D tier, unless we disagree. Mm, don't know. Never built. Will never build. I think the investment's worth it, even if it yeah. was yeah. decent when you've got the other physical options. And it's like investing in that character is a lost character if you want to use one of the other parts. Yeah, I feel just, like, yeah. I feel like yeah. just using fire is just better. Uh, yeah. I don't know a single person who actually uses physical MC. I'm going to be completely real. Um, so yeah, we'll slap fire, fire MC. Okay. Physical MC in D tier fire MC, probably in like what at a tier, uh, below Geppard. I would say B just cause her yeah, shield is so thin. Yeah. Like her shield is basically yeah. like no at all. Right. The only defensive thing she does is mm. if you use a taunt, right? If you do a taunt, then she directs that. Especially if you're against a uh, monkey, right? If monkey is going to hit you and you use taunt, it's I think that's nice. gonna be really good. But other than that, yeah, yeah, but the shield is just so thin that I, I, I don't really like her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're, we're all in agreement with that? Okay, I love her shield, mm -hmm. but if, if y'all disagree, I'm, I'm totally good with my ego aside and putting her in B tier. It's the same concept as March 7th. Really good character. Just yeah. other, better care, better options. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan. I would have put her in A, but that is totally okay. I'll put my ego aside and I'll put her in B tier. I think that's totally fair. Uh, Welt, I have no idea. I'm assuming A tier. We have this character and then we have... 
Uh, okay, so we have Welt, Yang, Zheng, Luca to go through, and then we're done. So we have four characters left. Uh, Welt, uh, where would we put him? I have no I idea. Welt's I will S. stay out of this. S, 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 I S, S, think S, Welt's okay, S. He's, yeah, yeah. He's just very good. Um, mm. I've been using him for so long. Like, I think at the start, a lot of people misunderstood his kit, where like, oh, he's an agility unit, he's a debuffer, he needs to apply speed, and we build EHR on him. But in reality, his, his skill multipliers on top of his talent is like one of the highest damaging E skill in the entire game, especially if it all lands onto a, to a single target, right? And then his ultimate MLP is also one of the best ultimates in the game because it's AOE in prison plus AOE um, actually pushback, which is like an incredible, incredible debuff. It lets you go so many turns without. So I'm a little bit biased. I'll say in my opinion, but in my opinion, I think he's just- Hey, he's that's just, okay. So, we yeah. love bias and that's why we have everybody else to bring us down to reality. I had to put my ego aside. Let's see if you had to put your ego aside. Well, what do you think about well? Do you have any opinions or no? Is that me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, I, I do think he's incredible. Um, and his idolons are disgusting. Uh, but yeah, at yeah, E zero, yeah. he's really good. Main DPS, he shits on enemies. The only problem is multiple enemies, like the bounce, can kind of screw you over. But I think he's really great, and he has like one of the coolest mechanics where he like stops enemies from actually doing annoying shit. Okay, yeah, uh, so really I'd deal. say low S. Okay, uh, Gotcha Smack, what do you think? Low, low S as well. The, it, his ult is really, really disgusting. It's one of the most, his whole entire <laughs> kid is one of the most crazy things ever, bro. Because yeah. imprisonment not only slows your uh, action value, it also, then he additionally slows your speed, which is like a double whammy to you not being able to go. Then he has an exposure debuff on his ult, which increases every fucking bit of your damage in a multiplicative way. So it's like, he does that while still being able to DPS with the DPS, so, it's like, this dude is dirty. So what's the <laughs> what's the right build on Welt then? The, I mean, you go DPS build, but you have to build in effect hit rate to ensure he's applying his debuff. So you need about 40 to 50% effect hit rate, and then he applies everything. Oh, not to mention, his technique is literally the most cracked technique in the entire game. It it puts imprisonment on every single cycle of enemies. What? Oh, it, it, every it's, single cycle. It's insane. Yeah, it's, it's nutty. Crazy. Yeah. So like, they're just like crippled from the beginning to end what the fuck yeah Bro. his only problem is he's dirty control man, resistance. okay well, actually on this point on on building ehr and well <clears throat> if you're just talking about the speed debuffs right actually you don't really need a lot of speed debuffs because his single e is like it goes multiple times right it hits a single target like three consecutive times if you have his um e2 or e4 i can't remember it's that one initial time so wait did i say even with right? like i don't know <laughs> oh. I, th I think Pokey died. Well, yeah, Pokey, oh, you there or no? That's unfortunate. Okay. I, I, I think if I did, I, said, I, meant, I meant effect hit rate if I did. I didn't mean break effect. Okay. I, I think I think we're all in grants that Welt is S tier. We'll go and slap him up there. We can bang the rest of the shit out. Uh, Yang Zhang, I think, is S tier. Uh, I think he's incredible. I think he's one of the most misunderstand units in the game. He's incredibly easy to build because he has built in crit rate, crit damage into his kit. Uh, you need, like... 22 percent crit rate and then you just max out crit damage uh for all those pesky pieces that only rolled crit damage on your artifact set I, I feel like he's incredible uh he might need a shielder you might have to get a little bit lucky for him not to get hit but his, his skill ceiling is really high and he hits like a fucking truck i love yang jing so much uh do we disagree with him being s tier it's okay if, if you do I'm just, I, am I think a okay seems really cool i just got him and i'm building him right now and it seems cool Okay. I really liked him at the start of my account when I pulled him because it was like I had no relics, so I just slapped crit damage on, ignore the rest, just when he gets his guaranteed crits, like, yes, yeah, sweet. That's And he was really good for that phase and when I needed the freezes. But now I'm just like, I, I, I wish I didn't AD him. Um, I just don't think he's in there. If you look at the rest of the DPS in S tier, I don't think he's up there with them, is my thing. I, and like, I, I, I feel like fair. Clara compared to Yang Ching, I'm like, I, I don't know if I'd put him above Clara. Okay. No, that's that's a fair point. That's a very fair point. I, I'm very biased towards Yang Jing. I love him very much. That's why I have y'all here, because y'all are uh, more knowledgeable with the theory crafting. In the ice, in the, in the ice niche, though, he's unrivaled. Like, he's, he's not, nobody's touching him in that ice. If, if, if a character's weak to ice, Yang Jing is out DPS. <laughs> he's dirty. But his yeah. biggest weakness is lack of uh, AOE. I will say, every time I've ever used him in a scenario where there's four people on the field, I, I, I'm, like, struggling hardcore. <clears throat> I also just really like uh, opening doors with elements. So, like, I don't have a lot of good ice 
Uh, I could use Pela, but I just want to have a DPS of every type. So I think he's probably worth building and investing in at some point. I don't know if you rush to it, but like he is definitely like a priority for me right now because I, I just don't have a lot of ice coverage. So yeah, I feel it. Yeah, I think yeah, on the, uh, easy to build. Yeah. Shit, guys, Jingle I gotta go, man. I got a client. Um, hey, gotcha. I love back. being here, man. All good, Much brother. Much love. Yeah, man. Good meeting all you guys. MTAS, pleasure. Go over yes, you brother. Buddy. And if um, Pokey comes back, tell him I said much love, man. Y'all take care. Sure. Yeah, you were awesome, man. See Enjoy you soon. You See you, dude. All right. Bye. All right. Well, we only have two characters left. We will slap Yang Jing to the top of A behind Gepard. Uh, and let's talk about Yukong. Uh, does anybody have any crazy experience or theories on Yukong? We only have two characters left. I just find her clunky. I, I, like, I just feel like it's too much effort for me to try and sink her into a team for me to be bothered. I just think she goes below the rest of the four-star supports. I don't care where. Okay. I mean, I think that's fair. Emtash, do you have any experience with Yukon? Not a lot. I don't have the resources to build her. Uh, I've heard, though, that, yeah, like, skill point intensive and, like, just, like, doesn't uh, flow nicely, like, with her buffs. It doesn't feel like it's, it's like... Um, you need things to line up properly with her, apparently, but I don't know. Gotcha, game. Are you still here? Do you have any experience with Yukon? I wanted to make a video about her, and so I built her, like, to level 80. Like, fully built her. I, I got so frustrated with her, so I decided not to even make really? a video about her. <laughs> really? <laughs> what? Yeah. what? Really? Oh, no, bro. I literally just thought, like, I'm probably going to get, like, uh, something wrong because I just don't understand how she works. Like, she's so clunky, at least in my opinion, and, and you have to, like, manipulate the speed. I know there's, like, an argument where you don't have to manipulate the speed, but in my opinion, like, boy, the, the, the risk-reward ratio is, like, it just, it just doesn't make sense. And I'm looking at her Eidolons, I think, at, like, final Eidolon, I think she becomes, uh, like, a bit better, I'm guessing, but we have her at E1. I'm not even pulling, like, for E6 characters, like, four stars. In my opinion, like, uh, she doesn't even come close to Ting Yun or, or Brawny, like, in terms of, like, buffing. Can, like, set it up nicely, I think, right now with uh, Kafka. Because, uh, as far as I'm aware, I think her attack buffing still works for DOT damage, even if the character, like, yep. triggers the DOT. So, that's a nice thing about her. But, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, Pokey, just, any, uh, any opinion on Yukon, Pokey? Um, wait, first, where, where, where did Gacha Smack go? <laughs> Sorry, my, my network uh, died. Gacha Smack was really upset by the last thing you said, so uh, he left. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah he was tilted. <laughs> you're you're going to get a few videos on yourself, man. <laughs> yeah, that's why, oh, uh, that's why he shit. imprisoned you with Wealth Passive. Or, uh, Wealth Passive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. oh my bad, my bad. Oh, shit, I, I got to drop him a demon. Yeah. Okay, but, um, what, Yukong? Yeah, Yukong, um, yeah. I think she's, she's not as... Um, versatile compared to like a starting you bring all this kind of stuff because she, she does need some kind of speed tuning and if you don't have her e6 it can be quite difficult to use because you can only get the buff up when within the her, her speed cycle right? of so, course yeah a little bit a little bit rigid but when you do manage to get her going um the the buff she provides is insane it's like 30 percent crit rate 80 percent attack and like what 60 plus damage crit damage which is which is kind of insane if yeah. you manage to get it though so yeah if yeah. you can get her to work i heard she's really good but she's just really hard to get working whereas like ting yun it's kind of just like you give her attack percent and speed and then there you go You're done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then brawny is just like crit damage <laughs> speed there you go uh yeah go on, any opinions yeah as perk was saying her like buffing capabilities are insane but having well if you constantly reset then maybe but it, it feels like too much effort like just slept in yeah for for me and this is what i'll say and then i'll, I'll ask what y'all's rankings are and we only got two left and i appreciate you guys staying this long uh is i think she's very good she's a little bit harder to build uh i do think due to her being so much more difficult to build i do think she is worse than ting yun bronya and shit even asta uh so i think she's probably the the worst harmony uh she's still <laughs> good but that that's where i would put her you need you guys, to build you need to build her right but you also need the speeds of everyone else to line up properly yeah right yeah because 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 it's like it's dependent on them getting turns but also her getting her other turns so it's like you need to like speed tune everyone so the further you get into honkai the better chances you could build her probably is, that, is my yeah that makes sense man. what do you think about vulcan i i don't farm the overworld anymore do you guys do it and do you use yukong for her speed thing Absolutely or was not. that just pure cope no, I'm not using that. Yeah, that. I do, I do. I actually do. Yeah, it's actually a lot faster. Yeah. 
Yeah, but also fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Just use Kafka technique. True, true, true. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um, <laughs> so I think Yukong will probably go A tier uh, behind Asta. Cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I'd cool. put her in B tier. I'd, I'd put, put her, her in B too. You'd put her in B. Uh, Pokey, yeah, where would you yeah. put her? Um, between B and A. All right, B, okay. High B it is. Easy peasy. All right. Uh, last character of the day. Who the fuck here has tried out Luca? <laughs> Not me. I did in the new event, it. and he was just punching shit. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm building him right now, but I think uh, his bleed damage isn't looking that great, at least to me. I'm not sure if I'm wrong here, but like I was trying him with Kafka. Like it's fine. Like the biggest selling point about him is that he can equip him on Pearls of Sweat and give him the and and reduce the enemy's defense by forty percent. To me, that's the biggest selling point. And obviously, he can still trigger the bleed. Yeah, <laughs> but 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 he's like he's fine. I I, I definitely think... not not as insane as Sample for sure. I mean, I know he's skill point efficient, which is very nice because he auto attacks a yeah. lot, and Kafka really wants an auto attacker. But uh, he's probably just you know I think it's pretty safe to assume that he's a little bit worse than Sampo. Uh, and pretty much made viable by Kafka. Was that is that fair for me to say? Yeah, right. And he has buff removal as well. That's pretty nifty. Yeah. Pokey, anything you want to say? Guobo? He pairs really, really well with Kafka though, because um, he does the f physical bleed is, is is the best uh, in terms of DOT. So that's that. And the ultimate is increased damage taken from all sources. So that includes Kafka's DOT, includes her initial attack, all the kind of stuff. And yeah, he's just a really, really good toughness bar breaker as well. So I, I think I think, it's I think probably, he pairs better with... Yeah. I, I think it's yeah, pretty ahead, fair go. to say that more testing is needed for Luka for sure. A lot of people were yeah, crazy yeah, yeah, to yeah. test Kafka because she's the new five star. Luka's still kind of uh, you know a mystery for a lot of people, and uh, we don't want anybody mm -hmm. in chat thinking that uh, we've tested Luka at length. And uh, yeah, there just hasn't been that much research on him. We'll probably wait to the next two to actually have a better gauge on him. Unless you want to say something, Tash. A physical DOT is the only thing that scales with enemy HP percentage, correct? Yeah. So so the further you get into the game, and like the more HP a boss has the more value he gets and so like maybe in other world tiers if there's like ever future ones or just like if things start to scale up there it might be like a down the road thing where it's like oh he he literally no one can do as much damage because um they can't get enough attack to compete so yeah it's like a down the road thing it, maybe. it's kept by his it's, it's kept by his attack though because it's, it's yeah, a percentage it's of max yeah. hp but um once it's he more... reaches the maximum of his attack, then then it's it's you can't yeah. So for example, the enemy has like a million HP, right? He he can't do like twenty seven percent of it. Like he's been can't do, mm. do two hundred and seventy thousand damage pretty much. Right. So right. Cap. Well, we'll put him near Sampo, and that'll probably be updated. Want to make that's very clear to everybody watching. We'll we'll update that more as more testing happens with Luca. He's in a pretty tough spot right now where not enough information is known. Uh, we'll probably do another one of these tier lists after um Fu Xuan or Inhibitor Lune and Links are released. Uh, but for right now. I think that's everything we need to talk about. So I just want to say thank you all for coming. And if there's any last things that y'all are dying to say, uh, feel free to go for it. But I just want to give a thank you to uh, Gotcha Smack, Global Certified, Vulcan Games, M Tash, uh, Mr. Pokey, Gotcha Gamer for being here today. This was fucking awesome. This was fun as fuck. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. It was nice to meet some of you. And uh, I hope that you get lucky with all your future pulls and, <laughs> and in life. I hope that you guys are, are just happy and uh, healthy and think you're all very cute and if you guys ever want to text me like you can cause... <laughs> okay <laughs> right. uh well then uh anybody else got anything pressing to say or are we all good to go and get y'all out of here because I, I kept y'all a little bit longer than i, than I said no it's 4 a or uh, 3 30 it's good all right i'm i'm, I'm ready for sleep thanks right. Tex. yeah Catch you later. yeah everybody who's here thanks so much i'll see y'all later it's nice being you bye peace boys peace. Bye. Boys, that is what we call hold up. Thank you all so much. That was incredible. Everyone loved it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you ever want to come back on, you're all welcome. Guys, that was incredible. Very good people. Very good talks. Very cordial. And also, people weren't afraid to say they disagree. And nobody was a bitch about it. Right? That's the best thing. Imagine having a meta talk, a calm meta talk, where nobody, where nobody is a bitch about it. It was nice. Everybody was great. 
I saw how many of y'all followed my channel. I saw how many of y'all followed their channel. Please go follow everybody. Uh, they all do Twitch. They all do YouTube. Please, please, please go follow the channels. MTash is streaming right now. If you want to go give him a follow. That was amazing. Good mother podcast. And it's hard, right? It's hard to get. And, and I did that intentionally. I wanted there to be that many people there to talk about their difference in opinions, to, to truly get to the meat of, of, of what we actually thought. And if people disagreed, I wanted them to do it, know that it's okay. And we don't have to get so dickish and childish about it. It's very, very, very easy. Talking about differences in meta should not cause anyone to quit YouTube, right? I, I really feel like it's really not that big a deal. And when we're all adults, it's not that hard to do. Mr. Pokey, well, I'm going to give a personal shout out to everybody. MTASH, incredible. So nice to see how like he's able to do his thing and still stay so knowledgeable. Gotcha smack, always so funny. Always so great to talk about, you know, different variety builds. Globo was very nice, very funny. A lot, a lot more charm than he has to show on his YouTube channel. Very nice to see that side of him uh gotcha gamer was getting obliterated by his cats <laughs> with some of the most out of with some of the most out of pocket takes i've ever seen uh it was funny as f uh mr pokey was incredible and and i do and i do just want to say that uh because I, I i very i very 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 much appreciate I very much appreciate Mr. Pokey coming onto the podcast specifically because he was warned by a lot of people to not interact with me, to not communicate with me, to not talk to me. Uh, and he decided, you know what? I'll make that opinion for myself. He was incredible. I always appreciate people giving me a chance, regardless of how much bullshit I have to deal with from dumb f on the internet who want to put me in an island. I refuse. I will, I will connect this community, whether it me bro okay and right now there's been so many more collabs there's been so many more collaborative events with all people getting together i'm going to do it i'm going to do it whether people tell me not to do it or not i i, I don't care I, I really don't care what people say because the other day i uh, guys I'm, I'm gonna do a hot take i know i'm not worse than <laughs> okay i i know i'm not worse than there's just no way i've done the math there's just no way okay i'm gonna do a hot take guys i think it was a pretty bad guy okay and uh yeah vulcan always so nice to have on always so charming uh really valent for qq uh yeah it was a very good time with uh some very good people uh, i hope you guys go follow all of them and uh if you're new here as well and you wanted to watch my stream due to support one of your other streamers just know that i greatly appreciate it uh, we will be doing another Gotcha podcast episode very soon. That will be going up on the old YouTube. So if you're in chat, feel free to say, yo, YouTube. And uh, it was just very nice because there's one reason why I love content creating. And it's the ability to connect my viewers and the ability to connect content creators and create a very nice space where we can all have fun together. Because uh, that's what all this is about. It's about having fun. Imagine that. We don't have to get butt hurt about comments that were said two years ago. Okay. We're all grown ups. We can have fun. Share this joy for the game that we love on this very, very, very limited time world that we have. And it makes me very happy. I appreciate you, chat. You're all very well behaved. Uh, even when y'all disagreed with my Bailu, yeah, you, you got a little bit out of hand, but that's okay. I get it. Uh, y'all can't help that I despise that character because I feel like she should have a cleanse. But that's just me. Uh, thank you all for enjoying the episode, another episode of God's Podcast. And now back to the regular scheduled program of my Twitch.tv forward slash tech stream.